TV Channel 14. For the Butler Bulldogs today, a big game from senior guard Jody Littrell is essential. Freshman J.P. Brenz has been the top scorer all year for Butler and the man around whom first-year coach Barry Collier hopes to build his program. Sophomore guard Scott Schreppler keys Evansville's outside game. He had 24 against Detroit on Thursday. Another second-year player, forward Chris Mack, had to step in when Dan Gottfried went down with an injury for the Aces. While senior forward Brian Hill has been the power inside for Jim Crew's ball club. Creative Sports Marketing presents the Midwestern Collegiate Conference College Basketball Game of the Week. Today, from Roberts Stadium in Evansville, Indiana, it's the Butler Bulldogs against the Purple Aces of Evansville. Today's game is being brought to you by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. And by Ford, and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? From Robert Stadium in Evansville, Indiana, it's been a den that has been very difficult for the opposition in recent years, but it's not been that way in 89-90, and they're trying to change it today. Hi, everybody. This is Jack Corrigan, along with former NBA great and Mr. Basketball here in Indiana, George McGinnis. For a basketball game with Butler and Evansville, George, Obviously, Butler trying to build a program, and it's going to take some time. But for Evansville, they expected more out of this 89-90 campaign. Yeah, it really has. It's been a very disappointing season for, that, for Evansville. Although they've had, had some key injuries, uh, they still have a few games left, so they think they have enough games left to salvage the season. They are just 8-5 and five here at home this year. Normally, they are next to impossible to beat here at Roberts Stadium. For Butler, as we mentioned, they are starting a new program. Barry Collier's building it around a youngster and a veteran. Right, J.P. Brins, who's an outstanding ball player. He's a great prospect. And, of course, Jody Littrell, the senior guard, outstanding shooter. Both great players. For Evansville, they've been without Dan Gottfried for much of the season, but they have gotten good inside play from a big freshman and from the senior Brian Hill. Well, we got our first look at Shasha Hoffman, uh, Hoopman, I'm sorry, uh, last Saturday against St. Louis. I think this kid's a great prospect. Should be a great matchup between he and Brent. And, of course, Hill, who's the third leading field goal percentage shooter in the nation, he'll have to be contended with inside. And when they go outside, they'll use their sophomore guard, Scott Schreffler, who had a big ball game against Detroit on Thursday. Obviously, there are keys to this game, and we have our four keys to the game. What's necessary for Butler and Evansville to win today? Well, I think for Butler to be effective in this game, they have got to control the tempo. I think Evansville will try and push it up at every opportunity, but Butler can't get lured into that type of play. Also, uh, they must create opportunities for Lipscrew and J.P. Brins inside. They have got to be involved in offense to be able to win this afternoon. And for Evansville, they're going to try and regain their confidence and do a little bit better job of controlling the basketball. They've had problems in that area. It promises to be a good ball game here in Evansville. Stand by. The starting lineups and more are next when we return. Today's Midwestern Collegiate Conference Basketball Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. By Keisters, your hardware store and more. By Deaconess, the right decision. By Pepsi, the taste that's generations ahead. By Kite, where they help you help yourself. By Unical and by WFIE-TV. s and K's Red Tag Winter Clearance Sale just got bigger and redder. Suits were on sale for $99.97 to $249.97, but now take an additional 20% off that price. Sport coats were on sale from $79.97 to $179.97, but now take an additional 20% off that price. And Red Tag sweaters, slacks, and outerwear are now 20% less. But hurry, the red coats are coming. But soon they'll be gone.
There are places that are colder and some that are hotter, but not many where the weather changes as much as the tri-state. You need a weathercaster you can trust to keep ahead of our area's changeable weather. That's Kirk Client, warm and friendly and committed to giving you a clear-cut forecast you can trust. Kirk Client, only on Newswatch at 5, 6, and 10, and only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. It's free. It's fun. It's Family Fest from WFIE TV Channel 14. Coming February 16th, 17th, and 18th to Eastland Big Mall. savings. Lots to do. And see. For the whole family. Plus lots to learn and share. Bring the kids. Bring everyone. Share Family Fest with your family. February 16th, 17th, and 18th at Eastland Mall. Family Fest. Stadium in Evansville, let's go to PA announcer John McCauley for today's starting lineups. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Robert Stadium, home for your University of Evansville Aces for this morning's Midwestern Collegiate Conference game between the Aces and the Butler University Bulldogs. Here are the starting lineups. First for Butler, at forward, a six foot five inch senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 30, Rodney Haywood. At forward, a six foot four inch sophomore from Marco, Indiana, number 35, Darren Archbold. At center, a six foot nine inch freshman from St. Charles, Illinois, number 44, J.P. Brents. And at guard, a five foot eight inch freshman from Los Angeles, California, number 12, Tim Bowen. At guard, a six foot four inch senior from Columbus, Indiana, number 14, Jody Littrell. The head coach of the Bulldogs is Barry Collier. Now it's my privilege to introduce the starting lineup for your University of Evansville Aces. At four, a six foot seven inch senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 42, Brian Hill. At forward, a six foot seven inch senior from Wheaton, Illinois, number 44, Larry Brands. At center, a seven foot freshman from Munich, West Germany, number 10, Sasha Hoopman. At guard, a five foot eight inch junior from Evansville, Indiana, Number 12, Shane Barrett. And at guard, a six foot one inch sophomore from Stone Ford, Illinois. Number 20, Scott Schreffler. The ace assistant coaches is Steve Bennett, John Prevo, Kirk Sarf, and Woody Wilson. The ace's head coach is Jim Cruz. The Evansville Aces at 13 and 11. The Butler Bulldogs at 4 and 17. Midwestern Collegiate Conference Basketball. That's next. 24 hours a day, one card gives you the most reliable long distance in the world. The phone card from U.S. Sprint. The only card that gives you 100% fiber optic reliability, superior sound quality, and lower rates than AT&T. To get yours free without changing phone companies, call Sprint now. The phone card. When you really need to get through, it's the most reliable card in the world. You know other banks make a lot of promises. At Old National, we make guarantees. You want direct access to a money mover specialist 24 hours a day? We guarantee it. How about bounce-proof checking? Guaranteed. The best deal in town on home equity rates. Guaranteed. You know, there's a big difference between a promise and a guarantee. To make a guarantee, you have to have the strongest bankers in town behind you. We do. Guarantee. That's why Old National is your bank for life. Our officials this morning or this afternoon, depending on the time zone you're watching this one, Sam Licklider, Don Edwards, and Tim Fogarty. As I mentioned, the records for these two teams, and Evansville leads the overall series, and have the Aces have won nine of the last ten, including the last five in a row. Butler going to try and turn what has been a tough year around, but they'll need a big effort today against an Evansville team that's trying to regain their touch. 
And the Aces control the opening tap. They have a few lineup changes, not only the seven-foot freshman Hoopman into the ball game, but little Shane Barrett, a walk-on, is starting at point guard. That's Barrett with the basketball. Scheffler from the corner. Scott Scheffler gets the first points of the ball game. Butler opens up, of course, in the man-to-man -man defense. Uh, Evansville has done a real good job working the ball around for Scheffler for two of the, uh, out of the shots from the corner. Haywood was bothered by Hoopman in the lane, and when he threw it out to Bowen, the little guy couldn't hang on. It would turn over on the Bulldogs, gives the ball back to Evansville in the opening minute of play here at Roberts Stadium. And even with the 11 o'clock Central Time start, we have better than three-quarters capacity in this arena. Both teams real patient offensively. I think this is a type of play we'll expect to see the rest of the afternoon. Nobody's going to be forcing shots out here. Neither team has a point guard out there who really wants to shoot the basketball. In fact, Barrett has yet to take a shot, although he has not played a great deal of the time. Shot clock is down to five. Hookman's turnaround. Rebound, the littlest guy for Butler, Tim Bowen, the freshman from Los Angeles. That was a real good def defensive series for Butler. Both teams very aggressive defensively, George, playing both, man to man. Both both teams playing man to man defense, and both were playing very aggressively. Switching. Hayward ran in the air and drew the foul. No shot, says Sam Licklider, and it is a foul, the first of the ball game on the senior Larry Brand. I, I think that uh, Haywood could end up being a key player in this matchup this afternoon because I really think man-to-man, -man, uh, he can take Larry Brand most of the afternoon. Haywood's got the mismatch right now. Instead, they go out to Schreffler. And again, they'll reset. There's Littrell open. Jody Littrell with his first field goal. We're tied at two. When you have a point guard, as we do for both ball clubs, Schreffler misfires, the ball's on the floor, and it comes away to Butler. Point guards that don't want to shoot, how does that change the team defensive philosophy? Well, defensively, it, it gives the defensive team an opportunity to really pack it in inside, because if you're not going to take the outside shot, they're just going to guard the paint area. And really, both teams are suffering from that. Here we see Boeing breaking the defense down. And they're drawing the foul. Good call by the official. But both teams, uh, uh, their point guards, have got to look for the open shot because both teams defensively are packing it in. Tim Bowen is coming off his best effort as a freshman last Saturday against Loyola. He scored 15 points in a victory for the Bulldogs, their lone victory in conference play. But then Thursday night at St. Louis, he scratched the cornea of his right eye when he was poked in the eye, and perhaps that's still bothering him as he misses both free throws. Yeah, that could be affecting his play today. We are still tied at two. 17-20 to play here in the first half. Schreffler for a three. Boy, does he have a great stroke. He's a player that Butler is really going to have to defend today because if he continues to get open with shots like that, he's going to make 50, 60 percent of them. Darren Archibald working against Brian Hill. Did everything right, but the shot rebound comes away to Evansville. Schreffler wants to push it up the floor. Skip pass that nearly landed in George's lap. Schreffler again, same result. Wow. Schreffler three out of four. He has all seven aces points. Every time he's touched the ball, it's been nothing but string music. He's quite an outstanding shooter today. He's not handling the ball as much as we've seen last Saturday against the St. Louis ball club. 
And when he moves without the ball and gets to the open area, he seems to be a much more effective basketball player. Haywood's shot blocked by Hoopman. But then Barrett threw a zig when Treppler zagged, and the turnover gives it back to Butler. Substitution, Chris Mack, the sophomore out of Cincinnati, comes into the ball game, replacing Larry Brand. Mark Jewell comes into the lineup, replacing Sasha Hoopman. There's Jewell, the transfer from Iowa, who missed a period of this season with an ankle injury. Right, he just uh, came back Thursday night, played sparingly. Uh, he was uh, going to be a big part of this uh, Evansville program this year, but of course injuries have uh, really hurt him and the team. Butler really needs to get a good shot this series down. They've come down, they've the ball up several times, as they did in this case. Uh, they've got to take care of the ball much better on the offensive end. Hill with the overplay forced the turnover. Butler trying to get themselves going. Evansville trying to add to their five-point lead. That's Jewell. Rebound Bowen, the second for the little guy. They have yet to get the ball in the hands of J.P. Brenz. Hillwood is blocked and fouled by Chris Mack. As, as I talked about earlier, I really think that this player will be a real key for Butler. I think if they can really look and find him on the inside down in the paint area, he'll be able to cre create havoc for the Evansville. Uh, for, uh, here, Butler is doing a great job defensively of denying the basketball inside the paint area. One of the problems with Haywood this year, he, you see his field goal percentage, his free throw percentage is lower than that. He's a 53% free throw shooter. He gets one out of two to make it a seven to three count. The Aces of Evansville leading the Bulldogs of Butler. More after this. They say that by a certain age, you fall into a predictable pattern of statistics. One spouse, 2.5 children, one three-bedroom home, and a typical four-door sedan. But what do they know? The 220-horsepower, 24-valve Ford Taurus SHO. Just when they thought they had you all figured out. When the Rutledge family needs auto, home, life, or health insurance, they see me. I'm their State Farm agent, Billy King. They keep seeing me as I help them keep their coverages up to date with our State Farm Family Insurance checkups. When they have a claim, they see me. And thanks to our checkups, the protection has been there. If you want to see a family insurance agent working for you, see a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, State yes. Farm is there. Yes, history does repeat itself because WFIE-TV's Wheel of Fortune Lottery Contest is back with your chance to win hundreds and maybe even eligible to win a million dollars on Who's Your Millionaire? Don't miss out. Send your losing Hoosier lottery tickets or a postcard to this address. Do it now. History is at stake. Include your name, address, and phone. Then watch history's most popular game show, Wheel of Fortune, weeknights at 6.30 on WFIE-TV, Channel 14. Evansville leading Butler 7-3. We should probably correct that to say Schreffler 7 and Butler 3. Boy, he has uh, really found the open areas today, and he's really playing without the basketball, something that we didn't see him do against St. Louis last week. And he's a much more effective player playing without the basketball and finding the open areas and using the pitch. Treffler getting the breather for the moment. Chandler, the redshirt freshman out of Columbus, Ohio, into the ball game. See the shooting percentages for both ball clubs right now. Butler's also hurt themselves by going just one of four at the foul line. Littrell is now the man guarding Barrett, and they've got Bowen on Chaka Chandler. Boy, Butler's pass inside, stolen away. Go ahead. There again, we've seen great inside position defense by the Butler Bulldogs. They have really played good defense in the paint area. Yeah. 
Jewell has done a great job as well as Hookman in denying even the smell of the ball to J.P. Brent. Really outstanding job, and the guards have fallen back defensively to help out when the ball has gotten into the area uh, down low. Ryan Hill couldn't handle the pass, and that's got Jim Cruz up and talking to himself. I think talking to Chuck and Chandler a little bit, too. Might have had a little extra on that pass. Bowen's in trouble. Finds Archbold open. He finally will take the shot, but had to double clutch it, but was able to draw the foul on Shane Barrett in doing so. You know, there again, I still don't think Butler's really come down one time at all this whole afternoon uh, and uh, really had a good offensive set. Now, that there was really not a bad shot, but it wasn't a great shot. He got away because he was fouled uh, in the process of shooting. All four fouls in this ball game have been whistled against the home club as Darren Archbold, the sophomore from Markle, Indiana, gets the free throw. He's an almost 84% free throw shooter, and his pair makes it a 7-5 ball game as John Shoup, a junior out of Michiganton, Indiana, replaces Archbold in the Bulldog lineup. Larry Brand and Scott Streffler return. Right here is about as close to a normal starting five for Evansville as they had anticipated this year. The only exception, and the big exception, Diane Godfrey, who is still out with the foot problem. Streffler is still firing them away just right. inside the three-point line. Unbelievable. What an outstanding shooter. I think they've got to play uh, better attention to him defensively. Uh, I, I, even if you want to put a trick defense on him, but you can't continue to let him spot up and shoot shots like that because he's not going to miss him when he gets open. Good anticipation by Chris Mack. Fires to Schreffler. He's got 11 points. Well, that's a nice decision making by Mack there. He came down and really took his time, uh, drew the defensive player into him, and dished it off to Schreffler for the easy two points. Good decision. We have played better than six and a half minutes. J.P. Brins still has not touched the ball for Butler. Well, they're going to have to find a way for him to touch the ball because in order for the Bulldogs to be effective, they have got to get him involved offensively. Littrow gets it into Haywood. Bowen goes in the lane, finally gets it to Brands. He's a little strong, tries to follow, reverses it home. Well, then there's a nice play. I think that Bowen could do a lot more of this because he's probably the quickest player out in the floor right now. And that time we saw him split the defense and made a nice decision by giving it to Brands going to the bucket. And you saw JP's relentlessness as he stayed with it and got the reverse. Down low, Chandler can't handle the pass. That's about the third time that Evansville has had a man open and they couldn't handle the pass. Butler trying to end a long load, load road losing streak. <laughs> Easy for me to say. They have not won this year. 0-11 this year. 12, Brenz doesn't get it, but he got Jewel for the foul. Well, I'll tell you, when the Bulldogs do go to Brenz, they seem to get positive results every time. Last time down the floor, we saw a great hustle play, offensive rebound, and him putting the ball back in. Now, here we have nice look inside. Pump faking. I don't know about that particular call there. It looked like Brenz created the contact. Sasha Hoopman comes back in, and Mark Jewell sits down. Seems, though, George, that if the defender has his hands up in the air, that's why he gets called, because he tends to lean that upper half of his body towards the offensive player. Absolutely, and maybe that's what the official was looking at in that particular instance. I've been impressed with this young man. He's a freshman out of St. Charles, Illinois, friends. He's very patient for a big player. Oh, yeah. Most times you get the ball into a, inside to a big player, uh, they want to do things very quickly. He uh, He's very patient for, for a young man his age, and uh, he's a player that this Butler program will be built around the next three seasons. Inadvertent whistle 
Now we'll have to see what they're going to do in terms of resetting as the 45 second clock is still at 45. So they'll check with the play by play and say take five seconds off of that. Scott Schreffler has all 11 Evansville points five of six from the floor. One of those a three pointer. And that's amazing. It really is amazing that the kid has all 11 points and he really had been paid uh, uh, very special attention to defensively. Very nice baseline move by Chris Mack. Oh, that was a real nice baseline move by Mack. Now, Butler defensively has got to do a better job of sliding over and protecting the baseline. You can't give up baseline in a situation like that. Haywood pumps and fires. Rebound, Hookman. Inside to the big guy. Sasha's short, and the rebound comes to Littrell. John Schuf trying to push it up for the Bulldogs. But Bowen is quick. Drops it to Brenz, who falls oh, at home. Nice find. Great finish there by Brenz. Now, that Butler can do more of that because, as I said earlier, this Bowen kid can break down the defense of Evansville and get into the paint area and make a decision whether to dish or shoot. Traveling violation called on Chaka Chandler as Tim Bowen forced him to carry the basketball. The Butler Bulldogs gave Evansville all they wanted at home. They're trying to pull the upset here on the road. The Aces lead the Bulldogs by two. There is a point at which all things must evolve. For small cars, that point is here. Introducing the Mazda Protégé, a small car that's expansive in room, powerful, and born of Kansai engineering, so the way it feels will change the way you feel about small cars. The new Protégé from Mazda. It just feels right. Hiring an attorney after being involved in an accident is merely exercising your right to be fairly compensated. At Robert John & Associates, we believe our clients have been wrongfully damaged and are entitled to receive fair compensation. People who receive large sums of money as a result of injuries are merely being given the equivalent of their legal damages. To discuss your case at no obligation or fee, call us at Robert John & Associates. Robert John & Associates, 425-2718. At Old National, we don't make promises, we make guarantees. The best mortgage options around, guaranteed. Just ask us. Branches where managers make their own decisions, guaranteed. Moneymaker CDs with superior rates and absolute safety, guaranteed. Credit cards with guaranteed convenience, right here. It's people like these who make it easy for us to provide guaranteed banking. That's why Old National is your bank for life. We want to remind you that the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of the Midwestern Collegiate Conference and creative sports marketing is prohibited. I'm Jack Corgan along with George McGinnis. And George, as you mentioned, get the ball to that young man. Something positive is going to happen for Butler. Well, it has the last three times down, last three times he's touched, he's scored two field goals and, and two free throws for the last six points for the Bulldogs. Butler shooting just 27% from the floor, but they're within a basket of tie in this game. Hookman tied up Bowen, but Bowen saves the ball, and then it went out of bounds off of Brett Etherington, and it will give the basketball back to Evansville. Hookman with his second block of the ball game. Yeah, he's, uh, he, this gets a real prospect. Here we have Bowen, again, going into the paint area, trying to create Huffman, Hoopman with a great extension for the block. Treffler from the corner. Max follow. Rebound. Bowen again. Boy, he can get up in the air, the little guy. He's got a little spring for a little fella. Brands and travel with the ball. He was one step further out than I think he realized. Absolutely. He'd just been a little bit closer to the cup that time. I think that would have been a real good basketball play. There's the turnover situation. Been pretty critical for Evansville because three of those turnovers were on opportunities for an easy shot. They had a backdoor cut, and there's another turnover. 
Bowen trying to push it ahead, one on three, and gets it home. He used Brins like a pulling guard to get to the hoop. Yeah, yeah he, looked, he looked like one of the old Green Bay Packers there. And uh, Butler's done a real nice job of getting inside the Evansville defensive scheme, scheme and every time they've done that, they've scored. Well, that's the first time they've been able to get Brian Hill the ball in a good shooting situation, and the number three field goal percentage man in the country has a chance for a three-point play. Well, here we have Barrett. Nice little look inside to Hill. Of course, got him in the area where he's effective, and, and that's why he's a 67% field goal shooter. Here we see another angle. Barrett into the paint area, and when he gets it down that low, he's, uh, he's very tough to stop. Larry Brand returns. Chris Mack takes a seat for Evansville. Hill also a pretty fair free throw shooter at nearly 75%. Three-point play gives Butler a three-point deficit to try and overcome. They were down by as many as six before coming back to tie it at 13. Yeah, they've done a, lot, a real nice job here in the last four or five minutes of really breaking down the defense of Evansville and getting into the paint area and making good decisions. John Shute dribbled the ball on the baseline, says Tim Fogarty, so give the ball back to Evansville. Yeah, now that wasn't a good decision. They really need to come back out when they're in a situation like that and reset their offense. Really want to put the, hand, the ball in the hands of Bowen. Jody Littrell's going to come back in for Butler. Barrett thought about the shot, but didn't take it. Well, when you haven't taken one all year, I guess that's a tough decision to make. And the ball was poked away from behind, and they say it belongs to Butler. And now Sam Licklider said it was touched by a Butler player. Oh, I think that was good recognition by the officials. The ball, the ball was knocked away here by the Butler player. As you see, it never touches anyone. And it was a good call. Just, just one official made a mistake, but it was corrected. Jody Littrell back in as Barry Collier says, you know, you never get those calls when you're 4 and 17. <laughs> I guess you don't, do you? Brenz and Hoopman banging away, and they force a bad pass. Schreppler came up with it, throws it into no man's land, where Littrell pulls it down, and Archbold will go in for the easy basket. Darren Archbold has four. It's a one-point Evansville lead. Both teams are, uh, seem like they're matched up pretty well evenly here. Um, I think it's going to come down to the team who's been, going to be able to take care of the ball in crucial situations. Both teams seem to be very loose handling the basketball right now, making a lot of errors. Both teams appear that they don't like each other too much as well. Fell back way off of Barrett. Schreppler, what a play by Bowen to block the pass. Eight and a half to go here in the first half. Ten on the shot clock. Butler's done a much better job on Sheffler since they switched uh, Bowen off to on with because he's been able to use his quickness. Bowen got picked off that time, and Schreppler got the shot. And on the rebound, Sasha Hookman went over the top of J.P. Brenz, the second personal on the freshman out of Munich, West Germany, as Jim Cruz talks to Tim Fogarty. Get a look at Jimmy, outstanding young coach. This is a veteran officiating crew here, and they don't, they don't get too flustered at all by the conversation from the sidelines. No, they certainly don't. Boy, there again, and you know, it's era after era, down on the Evansville end, and also the Butler end, and they have got to correct that. I mean, this has one, been one of the big problems for both teams. Well, when you get into situations, overplay by Brenz, Barrett, going over there it remains Evansville ball Mark Jewell is going to come into the ball game for Evansville but he'll have a chance for a few more words from his coach because we've got to stop and play
The Midwestern Collegiate Conference basketball tournament is back. After a successful performance in Dayton last year, the MCC tournament will return bigger and better than ever. Eight teams will converge on UD Arena for three days of the best basketball in the country. The winner is guaranteed a spot in the NCAA tournament field. Reserve your place at the MCC tournament now by calling the box office at 513-229-4433. People use all kinds of sophisticated machines to raise their heart rate. We'd like to recommend another one. The pulse quickening technology of Ford Probe. It'll get your motor running. K's red tag winter clearance sale just got bigger and redder. Suits were on sale for $99.97 to $249.97, but now take an additional 20% off that price. Sport coats were on sale from $79.97 to $179.97, but now take an additional 20% off that price. And red tag sweaters, slacks, and outerwear are now 20% less. But hurry, the red coats are coming. But soon they'll be gone. You see our score here at Roberts Stadium in Evansville, Indiana with George McGinnis. I'm Jack Corrigan. There have been a number of turnovers, and that reflected somewhat in the shooting percentages as well. Here we see Butler, 5 of 13, only 38%. And, of course, Evansville shooting 54%, but certainly turners have been the big factor in this ball game. Rebounding just about even. A significant factor in those numbers on the field goal percentage is that we had only 26 shots between the two ball clubs in the first 12 minutes of the game because of the frequent turnovers. The Larry Brand field goal again gives Evansville a three-point lead. You know, there's 45 seconds to shoot on that clock, and you know, sometimes you don't need to rush it. If you don't have a shot, you can back it back out. Bowen and Shep Shepler fight for the ball that went off of Scott in the Butler basketball. There again, we saw Bowen try to get the ball into the paint area to make a decision. Uh, Evansville were, was very good defensively and a great hustling play by Scheffler to almost get the steal. Down to 15 on the shot clock since they didn't hit the rim on the previous flurry. The shot clock did not reset. And Brian Hill hanging on to Darren Archbold. And that will put Evansville over the limit. Here we go. Uh, look at Archibald coming across the top of the pick there from Brins. And he put his hand on him a little bit there. It was a good call by the official. So Evansville will see Darren Archibald go back to the line where he has already hit two free throws. Evansville has been to the line just once. So the free throw misses now four of them by Butler have been significant. Mark Jewell tried a three and didn't get much of anything out of that well, one. Well, maybe. I don't know if that's out of his range or not, but he sure didn't look comfortable from out there shooting that particular shot. 6.50 to play in the first half. Now, Butler just needs to really come down here and take their time and not play with uh, and be in a hurry. They got a lot of time here. See right here, they're really trying to force the ball. They don't need to do that. Bowen. Literal trying to go around Chaka Chandler. Offensive foul as Chandler draws the personal. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know about that particular call. It might look like Chandler was moving his feet. And you really, on that particular call, have to be still. But that time, Butler at least came down, and they were very patient and tried to, to uh, come up with a good shot. But I guess it was a good defensive play by Evansville. It's been a little tougher for Scott Schreffler since he drew the defensive assignment of Tim Bowen and inside a foul as Brian Hill tried to put it up. Yeah, that was a good recognition by Barry Collier, the Butler coach, 
Um, since, in fact, Bowen has been on Sheffield, it's been a lot tougher for him to get open. Uh, he's one of these type of players. He, he loves to move and work off the pick situations. And when he gets open, he's, he's awful dangerous, as we've, seen, as we've seen this afternoon. Bowen's done a good job on him, though, thus far since he's been gardening. Brett Etherington was the man who drew the personal foul. So Brian Hill, who has the lone free throw attempt and conversion for Evansville, gets two more. Four points for the senior out of Dunbar High School in Baltimore. Got a real nice looking foul shot there. Good rotation on the basketball. Usually a player who plays basically inside all the time like he does. Has a, has a tendency not to be a good, uh, good free throw shooter, but he has a real nice rotation on his shot. A five-point advantage for the Aces. They have led by as many as six. That was early in the ball game at 11 to five. Brenz travels with the basketball, trying to put a move on Mark Jewell. Yeah, a little bit again, a little bit out of Brenz's range. He needs to stay posted up in the inside area. Butler, uh, for the last minute or two, have really kind of ignored him offensively. Uh, and then as a result, they're down five points. When he's been involved offensively, they've done a real good job of getting points on the scoreboard. Nine turnovers on Butler, seven on Evansville, make it eight on the Etherington steal. Now I can see what drives coaches gray. Chandler with the steal. And gets it off the Shreffler. Hill on the foul. Wow. Seven points for Brian Hill. That's a way to fill the lane by Brian Hill. It's a good, uh, good, uh, good, uh, good job because most players in that situation looking, thinking there's going to be a two-point score, we'll hope we'll pull up. He's done a real nice job of trailing the play and getting the two for the tap in. Jody Littrell called for the offensive foul, his second. Barry Collier is still upset about what he felt was a traveling violation by Chandler on that last sequence, bringing the ball up the floor. Well, he's not very happy at this particular point. Evansville with their biggest lead of the ball game with five minutes to play in the first half. And now we have got a foul called against Chris Mack away from the ball, setting an illegal pick. And Darren Archbold's going to get some more free throw opportunities. So maybe Barry Collier's conversation on the sideline paid a dividend. Maybe it helped a little bit. Butler has gone nine minutes since they have scored from the field. For Chris Mack, his second personal foul. And John Carafa, the junior from Noblesville, Indiana, will come in. I said the... Free throws will be tried by Darren Archbold. I stand corrected. It'll be Tim Bowen. Bowen 0 for 2 from the line. Brian Hill with the rebound. Butler's missed a lot of free throw opportunities this afternoon, and they've got to convert them if they want to have any kind of chance of winning this basketball game. They are 5 for 10 from the foul line. Alley oop for Hill. Couldn't handle it. Jump ball, the possession arrow gives the basketball to Evansville. Well, that was a nice delivery there by the guards from Evansville. Hill just wasn't able to control the basketball. Here we see Scheffler, a great pass. Hill just losing the ball off his hands. He's done that three or four times this afternoon. Multiple substitutions for Butler. They have Carafa, Shoup, Bowen, Haywood, and Rick Berry into the ball game now. Great name, Rick Berry. Yeah. Another turnover, Chandler. It went off of Schreffler. Nope, they say it was touched by Shoup. Yeah, no, Tim Fogarty and I. Yeah. I saw the way he was looking at Schreffler that it was going to be a turnover on Evansville, and he, he corrected himself. Well, there was C. Chalk. It was a good call. The officials are only human. They make a mistake now and then, but he corrected it. Butler still in this long drought. 22 turnovers in the first half between the two clubs. Shoop is sandwiched. The ball comes free. Brian Hill to Mack, and he carried the ball. 
Well, I know these two coaches have got to be about ready to pull their hair out. What an unbelievable rash of turnovers by both teams here in the last eight or nine minutes. It's just been helter-skelter. Well, Evansville averages 14 turnovers a game. Butler, 16 turnovers a game. The two clubs may do that in the first half. Shane Barrett is going to check back in for Evansville. 22-15 in favor of the Aces with 3.40 to play in the first half. Defense! 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 Chandler, a blocking foul this time as he tried to draw another charge. There's the difference in the quickness. Oh, absolutely. At the uh, time, he uh, tried to play a little Hollywood there, but Bowen was just a little bit too quick for him. The officials made a real good call there. Shane Barrett returns for Evansville, replacing Chandler. Rick Berry sits down for Butler, replaced by Wade Gull. A sophomore out of Logansport, Indiana. Tim Bowen 0 for 3 at the foul line. Still can't find the range. Wow. It's got to be disheartening. Uh, for Bowen, he's done a lot of things real well this afternoon, but free throws certainly have not been one of them. Now they've got Streffler handling the basketball again. He scored the first 11 points for Evansville and has not scored since. Yeah, but when we see him handling the basketball, he's not as effective as a player. Ryan Hill is a oh. it down low, and he's got nine points. He has picked up the slack. So 20 of the 24 Evansville points have come from two players. Biggest lead of the game. Carafa trying to work against Hill. Max on the overplay. He's into the stands. And Hill just stayed with it and hammered it. Oh, wow. What great hustle play by the Evansville Aces there. The guy who triggered that whole sequence was Chris Mack. What a great effort. He, he went, jumped over Terrace, got the ball back in bounds, and of course Hill with the spectacular dunk on the other end. And outside, Scott Streffler trying to get the five-second call, committed the foul. Jim Cruz hasn't jumped that high since he was playing for the Indiana Hoosiers. Well, I don't know if he ever jumped that high while he played for the Hoosiers. <laughs> Boy, look here, it's Mack. Great, great defensive play hustle there and Hill is the beneficiary of all of that for the slam. It's a great finish. The foul on Schreffler was his first. Now Bowen's right now suffering a little bit from problem. Let's see if he can just relax and get a free throw to get down for him. That now, that's time good. it was perfect. Yeah he looked like he had a pretty nice stroke now. A lot of times players like him they need to hit a free throw in order to get their confidence going. Let's take a look at the second one and see if he can do the same exact thing he did on the first one. Well, all four misses hit on the back of the rim, and that one rolled around the rim and Mack with the rebound. A 10-point Evansville lead. John Shoup was a good five feet off of Shane Barrett. Shreffler got open. Well, here we see Shreffler again in the area where he's effective. That time he got away from Bowen, was able to deliver the little 15-foot jump shot from the corner. A nice offensive set by the Evansville Aces. Shreffler coming out as Bowen was looking for some instruction and nearly came up with a steal. Shreffler hurt himself a little bit. Jump hook. Rebound, Hayward, and Barrett's ripping away from it. They're going crazy here at Roberts Stadium. Bowen knocks it out of bounds. Well, they are loving it here in Evansville. Their aces dominating, leading by a dozen over Butler. The shillings were burned out of their home. They called me. I'm their State Farm agent, Bill Clulo. 
Right away, I teamed up with a State Farm claims representative. I gave him all the information he needed, and Tom got to work fast. I didn't get there as quick as the fire trucks did, but I made sure the Schillings had a place to stay, money to live on, and got their claims started fast. Now the Schillings know a big reason why State Farm insures more homes than anyone else. State Farm teamwork helps you get back in your home fast. State Farm is there. This memory is brought to you by Unical. Since 1951, we fueled more NASCAR winners than all other gasolines combined. And we put that same high performance and winning spirit into gasolines for your car. What'd you say we take her for a spin, Murph? Richard. How you been doing? Hello to all my friends and family back in the tri-state. I'm Barbara Hobbs of Evansville, hostess of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Each week, join me along with Mark Patrick and Tony Lamont as winning Hoosiers have a crack at winning cash and fabulous prizes, even a million dollars. The next Hoosier millionaire could be you, someone you know or someone from the tri-state area. So watch every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. We've got a dandy for you next Saturday, February 17th. We'll be broadcasting from Cincinnati, Ohio, as the St. Louis Billikens take on the Xavier Musketeers, number two against number one in the conference. Join us for more exciting MCC basketball next Saturday, February 17th, St. Louis and Xavier at 12 noon Eastern time. Boy, Be Butler took a very much needed timeout. One one of the players I thought that they really had to get back into the ball game was J.P. Brent. He's not in there at this particular time. Schreffler on the move. Offensive foul on Scott Schreffler, and he knew it. It was after the shot. Schreffler gets his second personal. He's hurting a little bit on a diving play. He opened up a cut of some kind on his knee because the blood is dripping down his leg a little bit and he's hobbling. It's his right he knee, takes the I ball. Yeah, looks like he might have came down his knee. We really didn't get a good look at it at that point, but uh, given the type of injuries that happen when you're a player like that who hustles and, and gives 100% all over the court as Scheffler does, he'll come back, he'll be fine. Butler, a 70% free throw shooting team, is 6 for 14 from the line to go along with their 5 for 15 field goal percentage. They should be happy they're down only 12. But the missed free throws, they'd be right in this game because four of them were front ends of one and one. Oh, just opportunity after opportunity they've blown this afternoon. Mack forced his way inside, and he got shoved by somebody, John Carafa. That was a big time chef, too. Carafa gets his first personal. It'll be an inbound play. Chaka Chandler returning for Scott Schreffler. I don't know if J.P. Burns is, uh, Burns is injured or he uh, has some type of problem, but we haven't seen much of him uh, here in the latter portions of the second half. I think in order for Butler to have a chance to win this ball game, he's got to be a part uh, of, their, of what, uh, what their offensive thing, theme is. Final 15 seconds of the first half. Evansville can use all of it. On the baseline, Chandler forces one up. Rebound, Galt. And that'll do it for the first half. Shoot shot wouldn't have counted anyway. And Evansville with great defense in the latter half of this first half of action. In control right now, leading by a 28-16 count. We'll be back with halftime activities from Robert Stadium in Evansville after this.
as the city of Indianapolis has grown, Butler University has taken the step forward as the city's significant private institution. Founded in 1855, Butler's scenic 254-acre campus is home to some 4,000 students from all over the United States. Long recognized as one of the finest schools in the country, Butler is well known for its facilities and tradition of academic excellence. Butler offers majors in 59 fields of study from six degree granting colleges and an internship program that prepares students for life after graduation. At Old National, we don't make promises, we make guarantees. The best mortgage options around, guaranteed, just ask us. Branches where managers make their own decisions, guaranteed. Moneymaker CDs with superior rates and absolute safety, guaranteed. Credit cards with guaranteed convenience right here. It's people like these who make it easy for us to provide guaranteed banking. That's why Old National is your bank for life. When you work on as many sinks and screen doors, walls and windows, lamps and lawns as I have, you find out where to get your hardware. That's why Keister's gets all my business. Hey, I've shopped around, but I've always come back to Keister's. There's no one more convenient or helpful, and Keister's always has the right price on everything I need when I need it. Hey, I'm no expert handyman, but with Keister's handy, I don't have to be. Keister's, the hardware store, and more. Back here at Roberts Stadium, halftime with the Evansville Aces leading the Butler Bulldogs 28 to 16 with George McGinnis, I'm Jack Corrigan. Well, the first half, uh, started uh, pretty much the way we expected, George, but then turnovers became the dominant theme of this first 20 minutes. Oh, absolutely. It was just a rash of turnovers by both teams early on. Um, Butler, of course, never seemed to quit turning the ball over. Then they were never able to convert their free throw opportunities, which have literally killed them here this first half. Butler 6 of 14 from the foul line, and four of those misses front ends of one and one, so that uh, really hurt their cause and their efforts to get back into it. We expected Jody Littrell to be a factor in the first half. He was not for Butler. Scott Schreffler certainly was for Evansville. Certainly he was. He scored the first seven point points of, uh, for Evansville. As we talked about earlier in the show, he's the type of player who plays great off the ball. He was able to find the open areas, and his teammates done a real good job of getting in the basketball for the open shots. Schreffler, after he got the early points, watched teammate Brian Hill come on and dominate the action in the second portion of the first 20 minutes for Evansville. J.P. Brents had moments for Butler, but then, as you noted, did not play a lot towards the end of the first half. Absolutely. That was something I didn't understand. I don't know if he's injured or what, but every time that they went to him, they got real positive results. I know at one point in the ballgame, he had scored six points in a row for him. So the situation right now has Evansville trying to end a losing streak, leading by 12. Butler trying to get back into it. We'll be back with more halftime after this. They say that by a certain age, you fall into a predictable pattern of statistics. One spouse, 2.5 children, one three-bedroom home, and a typical four-door sedan. But what do they know? The 220 horsepower, 24 valve Ford Taurus SHO. Just when they thought they had you all figured out. Hundreds of tri-staters make pilgrimages to Medjugorje, Yugoslavia, seeking the Virgin Mary and claiming the miraculous. A tri-state man survives 10 full minutes with no heartbeat. People suspected Evansville Library is haunted. UFOs have been sighted over tri-state skies. How do you explain these incredible, mysterious events? Find out as we probe The, the unexplained. unexplained. Monday on Newswatch at 6, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. There just isn't a better way to start your day than with WFIE-TV Channel 14. Get the best three hours of morning news, this morning's business, NBC News at Sunrise, and The Today Show. Then at 9, it's live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Fun guests, hot topics, and always a lot of laughs. Make morning time prime time, Tri-State. Only on WFIE, where you want to be. Come on to the best, WFIE. Only on WFIE, where you want to be. Only on WFIE, where you want to be. Only on WFIE, where you want to be. Come on to the best, WFIE. Come feel the pride. Evansville, a great place to be. Working together.
News Watch at 5, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. Time in Evansville with the home team leading the Butler Bulldogs 28 to 16. One of the leaders for the Xavier Musketeers this year is Michael Davenport. When he's not playing basketball, you can find him in the kitchen or working on the art of karate. Let's take a close up look at Michael Davenport. Michael Davenport of Xavier University thrives on action. The leader of the Musketeers on the court is focused on guiding his team to their fifth straight MCC title. The driving force behind Michael's determination is a contrast of inner calm. Off the court, he spends his free time studying the art of karate. Although he's a certified black belt, Michael sees karate as a supplement to his basketball skills. Well, in karate, there's a lot of agility. I mean, there you have to control your your kicks and you know control certain muscles. And in basketball, that helps you by being able to do a little twist here when you need it, or to get out of tight jam. And when it's time to unwind and relax, Michael heads to the kitchen, where his cooking talent has been impressing his teammates as much as his shooting ability. I'm not very fond of cafeteria food, so I just decided to start you know messing around. And I, I just remember, you know, how my mom cooked stuff and just, you know, how I liked it, so I went from there. And it turned out pretty well. As diverse as his interests are, Michael has a firm goal set for his future. Like any athlete, I would like to go on and play, but realistically speaking, I know the odds of that, so I'm preparing myself for something else, and which is psychology, which is my major here. I like to be referred to as Dr. Davenport. I, I plan on going to get my Ph.D and be a sports psychologist. Michael seems to be having no problem striking an even balance with all of his interests, an asset to his life both on and off the court. And you might have noticed that Michael has to do his karate work in his basketball sweats because at 6'4 and 205 pounds, I can't find a karate uniform that would fit the young man. When we come back here in Evansville, we'll take a look at some of the highlights from first half play. s and K's red tag winter clearance sale just got bigger and redder. Suits were on sale for $99.97 to $249.97, but now take an additional 20% off that price. Sport coats were on sale from $79.97 to $179.97, but now take an additional 20% off that price. And red tag sweaters, slacks, and outerwear are now 20% less. But hurry, the red coats are coming. But soon they'll be gone. Katie's Electronics and Appliances is proud to announce the grand opening of their newest location in Lawrenceville, Illinois. King's gives you the buying power of a national chain and locally owned stores. GE washers and dryers as low as $4.86. Get a frost-free refrigerator with ice maker only $4.97. Self-cleaning ranges from only $3.98. Low down payments, easy terms, and grand opening savings. Chain store prices with a hometown advantage. That's why nobody beats King's Deal. On Inside Edition, our Gallup survey with Psychology Today reveals new attitudes. How are couples reinventing passion for the 90s? Find out on an Inside Edition special report, Faithful Attraction. Also, suspicion surrounds the untimely deaths of cult members. We think it's murder, or some species thereof. Can you be hypnotized to commit suicide? The mystery of mind control. Inside Edition, Monday at 3, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. There is an invisible but powerful force protecting you right now. It's your immune system. Because we don't see it, we take its germ-fighting capabilities for granted. Its power saves our lives daily. But when that power goes haywire, problems result, including the disease lupus. Find out what it is, what to watch for, and how it's treated. Monday on Newswatch at 5, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. Today's game between Butler and Evansville is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? 
And by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. 28-16 here at halftime. Evansville leading the Butler Bulldogs. With 10 minutes and 23 seconds to play in the first half, the game was tied at 13. Butler did not make another field goal the rest of the way, hit only three free throws, and that's why they're down by 12. Certainly, that's, that's one of the big reasons. Here we see the Bulldogs coming down and uh, feed to Brins by Bowen on the inside. Here he breaks down the defense. Good decision. Give it to Brins on the inside, and here he finishes it off with a slam dunk. Here we get the steal by Evansville. Here is, uh, I think, Chaka Chandler coming down, and he looks like he almost travels. He loses control of the basketball, but he was much aware enough to get the ball back to Scheffler, who missed his shot. Hill with a great follow there. And they did a good job of pressuring Butler on the defensive, at the defensive end, and creating lots of big shots. Done a great job all day. Here, probably the most outstanding player they Mack going through the chairs for a loose ball. Of course, Brian Hill gets the reward there from the steal, and he finishes it off with authority. Authority indeed, as Hill tossed in 11 points to help Scott Schreffler, who leads everyone with 13. We'll be back with all the first half numbers after this. 24 hours a day, one card gives you the most reliable long distance in the world. The phone card from U.S. Sprint. The only card that gives you 100% fiber optic reliability, superior sound quality, and lower rates than AT&T. To get yours free without changing phone companies, call Sprint now. The phone card. When you really need to get through, it's the most reliable card in the world. Patty Lazars is not only managing a career, but a household, too. And so she had a lot of questions about life insurance. I'm State Farm Agent Jeannie Young, and I explained just how important life insurance was for a parent like her. Together, we came up with a plan that fit her needs and her budget. And she knows I'm going to be there if those needs ever change. After all, even moms who do it all can use a little help every now and then. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Today's MCC Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. By Robert John and Associates. By King's, nobody beats King's deal. By Unical. By Deaconess Hospital, the right decision. And by WFIE TV. Get total control of your business finances on demand. Up to the minute accounts of your transactions in an instant. Introducing InTouch Cash Manager from Old National Bank, the area's first direct access business banking system. All you need is a PC, InTouch software, and a business. Your bank is now open. For more information about InTouch, see your Old National Banker at your bank for life. Both teams back out on the floor to warm up for the second half. You see the first half score, and the 12-point advantage is reflected in the team numbers as well, George McGinnis. Oh, absolutely. Butler, 5 of 15 from the field. Certainly, it's not a good uh, shooting performance. On the other hand, you have Evansville, who shot 50% and converted most of their free throw opportunities, which Butler has not. And that's where you have the big difference, I think, in this particular ball game right now. And you see the official turnovers. Well, you can add one more. We just were handed. They have corrected us. It's 15 turnovers rather than 14 for Butler. That's what they turn over on an average for a game. Evansville with 12. That was a significant number. All the right. big uh, individual numbers were initiated for Butler early on by J.P. Brenz, but he did not play a lot of it. Uh, as we take a look at the Butler numbers, Darren Arsbold had four and Tim Bowen three, but Bowen missed five of his six free throw attempts, three of those at the start of one and ones. For Evansville, Scott Schreffler scored their first 11 points, 13 overall in the half, and then Brian Hill had 11. The two combined for 10 of 15 from the floor. They were basically the offense for the Aces. They certainly were. They've done a real good job 
of, of distributing the basketball, but it seems as though uh, them two particular players were the ones who got the points. And uh, Butler, I just think, has got to do a better job of, of making their free throws and take much better care of the basketball this half if they've got, they're going to have any kind of chance of winning this basketball game. And you see they scored just one point in the last nine minutes. They scored only three points after tying the score with 10-20 to play in the first half. They did not make a field goal in the last 10-23. Your brother's coming out in their aggressive man-to-man -man defense again in the second half. Barrett back in at point guard. It's the original starting five for the Aces. Likewise for Butler. Absolutely, but this half going starts out man to man against Schreffler. 15 on the shot clock. Hill over Haywood. And a 14 point lead for Evansville. Well, I thought that might have been a little bit out of his range, but boy, that sure was a nice looking jump shot there. Well, he's 67% on the year. He's five out of six in this game. Friends turn around, nice shooter's bounce. JP with eight. That's what Butler's missed the latter part of the second half, and they got to do more of that uh, beginning of this half here. Boy, it's really interesting to watch Schreffler trying to get away from the little water bug, Tim Bowen. Still trying to work down low. Larry Brand just inside. Well, that was a good decision by Hill there. Most times, uh, you get the ball on the inside to people, and they want to react quickly. That time, he really took his time, let the defense come to him, do it back out to the open out area to Brand for the open jump shot. Darren Archbold setting a pick for Jody Littrell, draws a foul on Scott Schreffler, and that's three on Schreffler. First player to get to that plateau. Well, he's certainly got to be careful from here on in because uh, Evansville really needs his offensive output. Schreffler's done a good job defensively on Jody Littrell as well, and now we have got a violation on Archbold for a moving screen. A good, good call by the official. Archbold kind of lowered his shoulders right into uh, Scott Schreffler. That's the top of your screen. Here on top of your screen. More of a shove there. there. Yeah, more than a shove than anything else. But it was a good call by the official. Two minutes gone by here in the second half. Schreffler for a three. Rebound belongs to Evansville. Well, I'll tell you, Barry Collier's not very pleased right now. He thought that Evansville should have been called for the moving pick down at the other end. Larry Brand, he thought, was the guilty party. Inside for Brian Hill. And Haywood picked his pocket and then made a bad pass. So back-to-back -back turnovers. Alley -oop. And he's undercut by Haywood. Boy, here we go again. The same old story for the Butler Bulldogs. They work hard defensively, come up and steal the basketball for what to throw it away. And now Evansville converts again. Here we just see the end of that play with the alley oop past the hill who tries to get it back out, but the push underneath by Haywood, good call. First foul on Rodney. Schreffler around a double screen. Bren saves the ball to Littrell. Littrell is open for a three and buries it. Well, we haven't seen much of that this afternoon. He can, he can, he can get on track here. He could make a difference in this ball game. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the conference. He led the conference in that category a year ago, and now we've got a blocking foul on Bowen as Schreffler drove the baseline. First foul on the freshman Bowen. Chaka Chandler back into the lineup for Evansville. Schreffler sits down. Well, one thing that the Butler people told us is that Jody Littrell's the kind of guy who has, he, he almost shoots a set shot, so you've got to try and get him those free opportunities, right. and he just hasn't had many. He really of them. hasn't. They've done a real good job defensively on him this afternoon, but that time he was able to get open, set up, and knock the shot down. 
speaking of knocking down, that's what Tim Bowen did to Chaka Chandler. Bowen quickly picks up his second personal. And Chandler, the redshirt freshman from Columbus, Ohio, will get free throws. Yeah, Chandler takes a shot from way out. Bowen, really not a good defensive decision. I think in that particular decision where the player taking the shot from so far out is to get your hands up and not make the contact like he did in that particular case. Boy, Evansville has really done a good job today of converting their free throw attempts, and that's uh, that's played a major role in this ball game also. Well, that's only their fourth attempt, but they've hit all four of them. Short arm that one, and Haywood gets the rebound for the Bulldogs. Littrow was in trouble, but got it off to Brins. Haywood on the move over Larry Brand. Rebound, the big guy, Sasha Hoopman. Sasha. Hey, Bill, hey, uh, Evansville's done a real good job the second half, being real patient, running their offense, looking for the open area. Chaka Chandler fighting for the ball, knocked down one of the officials. After Shane Barrett, the walkout who played <laughs> soccer, who did this ball out of bounds? Let's take a look at this. Oh, he got clipped there. That's a 15-yard penalty, Jack. That's right. <laughs> Well, we're supposed to be playing basketball, and Barrett, the soccer player, boots it out of bounds, and Chaka Chandler throws a clip. Yeah, he needs to have his head in front on that play. Archbold trying to drive, and he's bumped by Brian Hill. Good call. I'll say one thing for Darren Archbold. He is probably the most fearless guy on the dribble for Butler. He's not afraid to take it down the lane. Well, he has done that several times, but he really hadn't gotten a whole lot of positive results from that. He really needs to back that thing out and, and, and reset their offense. Mark Jewell and Chris Mack return. Brand and Hoopman return to the bench for Jim Cruz. Evansville Aces, 16-15 to play here in the second half. Bowen on the move, might have got away with an extra step. The volleyball rebound comes to Brian Hill, and Brins, trying to get out of the way, commits the personal, and for J.P., that's his second. Real real good defensive uh, rebound in there by Evansville. They've done a real good job. Bowen's coming in, breaking down the defense again, but they're making him shoot that shot. They're not letting him dish it off now. He really hasn't made any, and, of course, Evansville doing a good job of taking the defensive rebounds and limiting, limiting uh, Butler to one shot. Schreffler back for Shane Barrett. Well, almost every one of Bowen's shots today has been off the back of the rim. Oh. Shoots him a little heavy. Mack, foul. Darren Archbold trying to cut him off on the baseline, so they're calling them a little more closely here in the second half. That is already 16 fouls on Butler. Timeout on the floor, 15.45 to play in this one. Evansville by a dozen. Okay. I think the service that we got was fantastic. They don't have a stereotype idea that a woman is a dumbbell when it comes to hammer and nail. I've bought a lot of stuff of cotton. Have you? Oh, yes, indeed. I certainly have. University of Evansville, an independent liberal arts and science university. Value-oriented, small, yet international in focus with their British campus at Harlexton College. These characteristics are the very heart of the University of Evansville. The university offers over 60 academic choices, as well as outstanding student organizations and athletic programs. The University of Evansville, its reputation for excellence means a superior education. 
Grizzlies. February sell down. Savings continue. Grizzlies must reduce their inventory before March 1st taxes take their toll. Get an RCA remote control color TV with cable ready tuner for only $269. The high performance of a Mitsubishi 41 inch projection TV with Diamond Vision 2 picture, just $21.99. A Philips Super VHS camcorder with LCD color viewfinder, only $988. February sell down. There's still time. Get the high performance edge only at Grizzlies. The Midwestern Collegiate Conference invites you to be a part of the fastest rising conference basketball tournament in the country. Eight men's and four women's teams will converge on the UD Arena in Dayton beginning Thursday, March 8th for a three-day basketball extravaganza. Be a part of the excitement. Reserve your tickets now by calling the ticket office at your favorite MCC institution. You can see the difference. Butler never let Evansville get into the bonus in the first half. In the first four minutes of the second half, they've been called six times. Chandler yeah. is fouled by Littrell, and that will put the Aces on the foul line. Well, they're in the penalty already here with 15 minutes and 36 seconds to go. And, of course, Evansville, a good free throw shooting ball club. This is going to play to their advantage. Chandler. One of two at the foul line earlier in this half. Spins it home. Evansville has led on two previous occasions by 14 points. A Chandler conversion here will make it three at that advantage. Hill with the rebound blocked by Brent. Boy, good defensive play there by Brent. Ball bounced long. And Evansville was able to get the offensive rebound. Oh, wow. Chandler with the steal. Nearly carried the basketball. Slams it home for his first field goal. <laughs> he almost walked with it, but he ball bounced a little high. Quick dunked it. Well, the turnovers have really killed the Bulldogs of Butler. Well, they've really got to make a concentrated effort. Every time down, they're going to at least get a shot at the cup. Brian Hill fighting through the pick of Jody Littrell is called for the foul. Number three on Brian, third team foul on the Aces. Here we got Chaka coming into your screen. The ball bounces just a little bit high. He quick dunks it. Literal. Rebound, Mark Jewell. Boys, he got a sweet looking shot. Shreffler with 15. What an outstanding shooter when he can find room to get it off. Biggest lead of the ball game at 17. Brands working against two. Block and foul. Oh, wow. I think uh, Sasha looked like he had all Paul on that one. Mark Jewell picks up his second personal foul. Here we have Bourne delivering the ball inside to Brins. Nice little pump fake inside. Wow, I don't know about that particular call there. Looked Mark. like the big fella done a pretty good defensive job there. Mark said, hey, I got all ball. Brins with nine points now. Let's take a look from the other, another angle here down low. Boy. He got a, you can see from that angle, he got him down around the elbow with his elbow. But he did get an awful lot of ball. He certainly did. Friends, the first man in double figures for the Bulldogs with 10. Larry Bram from way outside. Rebound to Friends. Oh. 
Haywood. Yes. Rodney Haywood with three, but that is only the third field goal in the last 16 minutes by Butler. That certainly is, and that wasn't a real good shot for Haywood's ability, but he got that one to go down. They've run off four straight points, but it's still a 13-point Evansville advantage. 13 and a half to go in the second half. There we see Evansville again, moving the ball, running back screens. Chris nice. Mack with the nice, shot put yeah. shot. Nice baseline drive by Chris Mack. He's got a real nice touch on his shot. That's a very difficult shot, a running one-hand shot at the hoop. Real nice shot by Mack. Four points for the sophomore from Cincinnati. Brenz and Jewel square up again. He couldn't get the shot. Haywood couldn't take it either. I don't think he wanted the shot that particular time. Haywood this time blocked and fouled again by Mark Jewell. Three personals on Jewell. So now three players for Evansville with three personals. Hill, Schreffler, and Jewell. Here we got Liptro throwing the ball inside to Haywood. He got away with a little hook there and it looked like Jewell come right across the body to commit the foul. Jewell has to sit down and Sasha Hoopman returns. Rodney Haywood gets the free throw. As we mentioned before, he is not overwhelming from the foul line, a 53% free throw shooter, but two of four today, so right about at his average. And right. And when he, gets, that one. when he gets the ball down low in the paint, it's really not that bad a proposition to foul him. Chandler open for the jumper. Hopeman going over the top of J.P. Brenz draws the personal foul. Third foul on Sasha. Boy, they have really put the clamps on these guys here in the second half. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, they're really calling them pretty close out here right now. Uh, that particular play, Sasha Hootman looked like he just barely made some contact with Brenz and, of course, was called for the foul. 16 fouls on Evansville, so it'll be bonus time for both clubs the rest of the way. Archbold has to double clutch, and the rebound comes to Hoopman. Schreffler on the move. Mack nearly lost the ball, and then was fouled by Jody Littrell. And for Jody, that is his fourth personal foul. Problems for Butler because of the four personals. Well, he really, uh, he really hadn't had an opportunity to really get off offensively because of, of Evansville defense. They've really done a really outstanding job defensively on Lichu and not giving him the open shot. Here we have Sheffler throwing it in there to Mack, and he does a good job of knocking the ball away, but going after it the second time picks up the foul. Chris hits the free throw. He's got five points in the ball game. He was the Cincinnati Player of the Year out of St. Xavier High School in Cincinnati, but came over here to Evansville for his collegiate action. Well, here's another player I like. I think he's going to have a bright future. He's got uh, real good basketball since he's got a real good mind for the game. Going down the lane, a blocking foul on Shane Barrett as Tim Bowen tried to drive home. And now the fans getting upset at all the whistles. Both teams over the limit. Here, Bourne drives down, comes across the top of the key. Without question, good call. Wasn't even close. Uh, Barrett was moving all the way. It was a good call there by, by the official. Shane Barrett with two personal fouls, and Tim Bowen, who went one for six at the foul line, gets that one. Well, Four there, points for the freshman. There's an area in his game where he really needs to work on over the next three years in the summertime. And just go out and shoot free throws because he's going to get a lot of opportunities to shoot him because of his quickness and his ability to per penetrate inside the defense. Got that one to bounce home for him. Five points for Tim. We should also remark that Bowen was poked in the eye and scratched his right cornea the other night, so his vision might not be 100% oh, today. That could be true, too. That could be a, a factor, certainly. Treffler travels with the basketball. 
Turnover gives the ball back to Butler as the Bulldogs have a chance to get it down to within 10 again. 11.50 to play in this one. We'll be back with more after this. People use all kinds of sophisticated machines to raise their heart rate. We'd like to recommend another one. The pulse quickening technology of Ford Probe. It'll get your motor running. Joe, you just aren't doing the job. As your doctor, I have to tell you that your health is in jeopardy. Your job, family, and health. It can take everything that is important to you, even your life. Chemical dependency is an illness, but treatment works and recovery is successful. When you've had enough, call the Deaconess Recovery Center. It just might change your life. It's free. It's fun. It's Family Fest from WFIE TV Channel 14. Coming February 16th, 17th, and 18th to Eastland Big Mall. Big savings. Lots to do. And see. For the whole family. Plus, lots to learn and share. Bring the kids. Bring everyone. Share Family Fest with your family. February 16th, 17th, and 18th at Eastland Mall. Family Fest. Evansville led it 28-16 at intermission. Their advantage remains a dozen. As you look at the foul trouble situation, Evansville with a host of three and Jody Littrell with four for the Butler Bulldogs. And Littrell is on the bench right now with John Carafa in the ballgame. We've had 31 fouls and about 35 or 40 turnovers in this game between the two clubs. Well, as, as, as bad as Butler is... Uh, Turn the ball over as bad a job as they've done as turning over this afternoon. Here with 11 minutes to go, they really got an opportunity here to knock it to within 10 and get right back into the ball game. Friends over Hookman. The freshman out of St. Charles, Illinois, has a dozen. Boy, that's a real, real nice, smart play by Butler. They know where their bread and butter is. They ran a real nice play and dumped the ball inside to Brenz, and he delivered. Barrett looking for their bread and butter main, and Scott Schreppler gets his. 16th and 17th points of the afternoon. Well, certainly what caused that play was a great pick by Brand, which which uh, Bowen had to trail, and Sheffler, Sheffler came off with a sweet little jump shot at the top of the key. Carafa's jumper misses the mark, and down on the floor, we've got a foul on Scott Schreffler wow. trying to block out Darren Archbold, and for Scott, that is his fourth personal. Well, that's a big, big foul for Evansville. You remarked about the pick set by Larry Brand on Tim Bowen as you see Brian Hill coming back into the ball game for Chris Mack and Chaka Chandler for Scott Schreffler. Barry Collier, the Butler coach, has been complaining that Brand is setting an illegal pick to free Schreffler. Absolutely. He's been complaining all afternoon that Brand's been moving on that pick. Archbold with the free throw, and after going 6 for 14 at the line in the first half, Butler has hit seven straight free throws here in the second half. Had they been a little more effective at the foul line in the first half, we'd be in a real nail bite. Oh, yeah, it would be a real tight ball game, but they still got an opportunity. They're only 10 points down here. Great Turnover. defensive play. Archbold's going to go all the way himself and get it. Darren with his second field goal. He's got eight points, and the lead is down to eight oh, for the boy, Evansville Aces. You, this is what Evansville has suffered all year, lapses, uh, especially in the last three ball games that they've lost. They come out and they play well, and they've had these just mental lapses where they've really done nothing defensively or offensively and let the team get back in it. But let's give Butler credit. They've done a real good job here in the last two minutes. That miss by Shane Barrett was the first shot he has attempted this year. Bowen, trying to make the move, dribbled the ball off his foot. Made a heck of an effort to get it back. The turnover gives it back. Well, that was a good hustling play there. He tried to penetrate, which he had been doing well all afternoon, but just an unfortunate play, but it was a good hustle on Bowen's part. 
34 turnovers in the game. Butler with 18 of them. Ten minutes to play with an eight-point advantage for Evansville. They're trying to end a three-game losing streak, and they have not lost three straight at home since the first season for Jim Cruz. Brian Hill misfires. Rebound, volleyball to the Bulldogs. Good defensive position inside by Butler. They really need to come down and get a good shot now. Larry Brand and Rodney Haywood really banging away down in the low block. Ball belongs to Butler as Haywood, Brand, and Barrett all got tangled up. They're really getting to know each other down there. A lot of physical play. Mark Jewell comes back. He's got three personal fouls. Chris Mack comes back. So now Evansville going with a much bigger lineup. Basically four forwards and Chandler, and Chandler is a 6'4 guard. Absolutely, it's a big lineup, but you have Brand and and uh, and uh, Mack, who are great outside shooters, so it's a real good rhythm to what they got out there offensively. They got two in, three inside guys and two guys who can really shoot the jumper, which is a good blend. 9.15 to play. Inside the Brens against Jewel. Jewel got a piece of it and it went down anyway. Wow. Unbelievable. J.P. Prince. Only a freshman, and boy, has he got an outstanding future. He's a player, certainly, that Barry Collier is going to build this Butler program around the next three years. Fourth personal on Mark Jewell. Here was a nice delivery inside to, to Brins. Again, great extension and a nice little finish. Hopefully, he can finish it off here for the three-point play. This is as close as Butler has been since 22 to 15, as they have now cut it down to five. Now, this is where Evansville has also suffered from a lack of leadership. Last year, they had had that in a couple, three seniors they have, but this year, they really haven't had a player to step forward in crucial situations. They missed Scott Hafner's presence. He's now in the NBA with the Miami Heat, and Dan Godfrey, the fifth-year senior, who is still out, although they have taken the cast off his broken foot. Chandler on the move, right it'll count. No, the foul in the lane on one of the Butler players, Rodney Haywood. Haywood. Yeah. Second foul on Haywood as he was trying to bang away with Brian Hill. Tim Bowen saying he could use a breather. Starting to get pretty rough on the inside, Jack. Uh, again, uh, Evansville came down. They really didn't look confident there in that offensive set. It seemed as though nobody really wanted to handle the ball. Uh, everybody touched it, got rid of it very quickly. Uh, they've really got to have a player to step up and accept the challenge in this situation here. Tim Bowen, the freshman, says, give me a break, will you? Of course, <laughs> an official's timeout comes up shortly, so it's a good move there. He can catch it. A little extra time really out of it and, and get right minutes. back in without right. missing too much game clock. Absolutely, good points. Played a lot of minutes this afternoon. And uh, he can catch a couple minutes here and a time up, a timeout coming up to get a couple minutes there. So he, he he deserves the rest. He's done a good job. Brian Hill, five for five at the line, leading the way inside with 15 points. Scott Shreffler leading overall for Evansville with 17, but he's on the bench with four fouls. Brins goes around Jewel, but then misses the shot, and Carafa knocked it out of bounds. Barry oh. Collier is going to be called for the technical. Wow. Barry Collier saying that he grabbed the rim as Brins went to take the shot. Well, if somebody better get Barry here, he's going to get kicked. Let's take a look here. And there's a second technical. Oh, no question. Oh, absolutely. Chris Mack was on the rim. Unbelievable. As Brins Very went tight. to take the shot. He certainly, he certainly has a gripe there. And he was hit with a second technical foul there. Really unfortunate. If we look at it from another angle. Oh, oh no absolutely doubt. no question about it. Mack all over the rim. I can see why he's up so upset especially in a ball game his team has really battled back to get it this close with 825 to play. Well, Barry back at his alma mater knows he's got a big job ahead of him and when you 
struggle it seems like the problems mount and unbelievably Scott Streffler misses the technical foul shot gets the second one it just seems as though when things go bad they get worse and that's been the whole story for the Butler Bulldogs all year but this this Barry Carr he's a bright young coach and I'll guarantee in a few years once he has an opportunity to put his mark on this team they'll be uh, very competitive in this league well, who could believe an 86% free throw shooter ends up splitting four technical free throws. 19 points for Schreffler. Keep in mind, he's got four personal fouls. The lead is back to nine. Boy, that was a big, big play there. Unfortunately for the Bulldogs, of course. Still 25 seconds on the shot clock. Schreffler. Rebound Archbold for Butler. Let's see who's going to, who Sheffler's going to be guarding. Maybe they might try to isolate him, of course, carrying four fouls to get his fifth. He's going to go up to be guarding John Shoup. Shoup has not scored in the ball game. He's the guy in for Bowen right now. Big possession here for Butler. They want to kick it back down to seven. They go to Brands. He puts it up no, but Mark Jewell has just fouled out of the ball game. Boy, again, every time they've delivered the ball to, to Brands, He's really answered the prayer. He has done a really outstanding job down low on the block this afternoon. Here we see Carafa de delivering the ball in. He loves to take it to the baseline. There again, we see Jewel gets him with the, with the uh, hand underneath. He got both hands in the air on that, but looks like he touched him underneath. Looks like the foul was actually called on Mark as he first started to make the spin, right. and either with the hand or the hip is what initiated the whistle. Well, I think you're right there, Jack. So Jewel fouls out with 7.23 to play. He might not be the last guy to foul out today. All right, now let's see Let's see how the Butler team reacts. Now, we know and they know that they got a terrible call, which uh, reverted into two points for Ravensville on the technical foul. Let's see if they can put that out of their mind with seven minutes and 23 seconds to go here and try and get back into this ball game. 10-point second half for J.P. Bren, 16 in the ball game. Butler hanging tough despite the adversity. They are down seven here in Evansville. Western Collegiate Conference believes you can't be the brightest and the best if you are involved with drugs. Drugs may be the single most dangerous threat facing us today. Hi, I'm Jim Cruz of the University of Evansville with a message about drug abuse. Drugs are a deadly game. You don't need drugs to feel good. Don't risk your life by taking drugs. Give yourself a chance to realize your potential. Stay away from drugs. The preceding announcement was sponsored by the Midwestern Collegiate Conference, home of the brightest and the best. You know other banks make a lot of promises. At Old National, we make guarantees. You want direct access to a money mover specialist 24 hours a day? We guarantee it. How about bounce-proof checking? Guaranteed. The best deal in town on home equity rates. Guaranteed. You know, there's a big difference between a promise and a guarantee. To make a guarantee, you have to have the strongest bankers in town behind you. We do. Guarantee. That's why Old National is your bank for life. Hundreds of tri-staters make pilgrimages to Medjugorje, Yugoslavia, seeking the Virgin Mary and claiming the miraculous. A tri-state man survives 10 full minutes with no heartbeat. People suspect an Evansville library is haunted. UFOs have been sighted over tri-state skies. How do you explain these incredible, mysterious events? Find out as we probe The, the unexplained. unexplained. Monday on Newswatch at 6, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. Welcome back to Roberts Stadium in Evansville with the host aces leading by seven, but a very nervous crowd here because 
Evansville has lost its last two games at home. And keep in mind, over the last three and a half seasons, they are 43 and six here at Roberts Stadium, but just eight and five this year. Absolutely, they haven't lost two games in a row back here in Evansville, I think, since 1986. But let's give Butler credit too. They they could have folded up to him, but they haven't. They played this way all year, but they just haven't had the positive results from it. But these Clips have really played hard here this afternoon. They have outscored. Evansville Butler has you see Evansville now it, it doesn't seem to be aggressively at wanting the attack the, bas the basket they're just kind of dribbling the ball around and everybody's holding on Brand had to fire a three at the buzzer Brian Hill with a big rebound and they'll be able to reset it well they got to be more aggressive offensively it seems as though no one wants to shoot that and John shoot foul Scott Shreffler First foul on shoot. Schreffler will go back to the foul line. Butler, well, let's watch it again here. Here he takes him. It's a good pick. He just kind of hung on to him there. I, I guess he wouldn't be a bad player to hang on to the way he strokes the ball. Really? Schreffler gets that one to crawl home. He's got 20 now. Last three points coming at the line. He is three for five at the foul line after going two for four with technical free throws a few moments ago. Sasha Hoopman returns and Schreffler will sit down. They'll go back to that big lineup again, trying to save Schreffler, who has the four personals. Well, I think also, too, they, they want Hoopman in there to try and come back. Burns, who's just really been a terror on the inside and a thorn in the sides of the Evansville Aces back all afternoon. Haywood on the move. Nice Whoa. shot. Nice shot by Rodney Haywood. Taking it to the cup. Seven points for Haywood. A seven-point lead with 6.05 to play. Evansville is going to be very patient here. Chandler was in trouble, but was able to find Mack back outside. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Hill over the foot. Yes, and one. Oh, I'll tell you, that was a great offensive set by Evansville. They really took their time, got the ball, really where their strongest offensive player was, Hill, and he converted. Here, we have Shaka Chandler up top. Over the brand, nice delivery inside in the paint area. Of course, Hill, a 67% field goal shooter, delivers. Brian adds the free throw. He's got 18. He's been perfect at the line and nearly perfect from the field. The lead is back into double digits. Big offensive possession, so they go to Brins, who left it short. Hookman with the rebound. The seven-footer. Forced friends to change his shot. Right, he had to extend a little bit more than he's normally used to doing. Archibald just took the ball right out of Chris Mack's hands. Shoot for a three. Oh! Yes. John Shoop, I think that's his first field goal attempt of the afternoon, and he hits a three. And I'll tell you, it couldn't have come at a better time. I think we're going to have a ball game here. But he is a good three point shooter at better than 40%, and he gets a big basket as Evansville calls time with exactly five minutes to play in a dandy of a ball game. 24 hours a day, one card gives you the most reliable long distance in the world. The phone card from U.S. Sprint. The only card that gives you 100% fiber optic reliability, superior sound quality, and lower rates than AT&T. To get yours free without changing phone companies, call Sprint now. The phone card. When you really need to get through, it's the most reliable card in the world. When you were a kid, you wanted your bike to sound like a car. Nowadays, you'd like your car to be as quiet as that old bike. So use a gasoline that can do a better job quieting knocks, one that's two octane higher than regular unleaded. Unical's 89 octane. Hey, Jimmy. Hi, Murph. It's the great game last night. 
Gee, thanks. Thirty minutes of your early evening time is valuable to you, isn't it? That's why on Newswatch at 5, Mike Blake and Ann Comis give you more than just a preview of the same news you can see at 6 p.m. We make Newswatch at 5 different by giving you the news. Plus the news you can use. Like ways to stay healthy from Dr. Red Duke, tax tips with Brad Harrison, and much more. Our newscast is different. It's worth your while. Give us a try and see. Newswatch at 5, only on WFIE-TV, Channel 14. Some of the A-sets entertaining the crowd here at Roberts Stadium. It's a good place to play. They're going to make some major renovations to this building after the final home game on March 4th against St. Louis. We won't recognize the place next year, they tell us. You see the team foul situation in the second half. And Butler, after a horrible first half, has been perfect at the line in the second half. Schreffler back in the ball game. He has four personals for Evansville. He's also leading the way for them with 21 points. He'll fire a long distance three. Rebound, Brian Hill. Boy, what a nice offensive rebound by Hill. Really attacked the glass on that. Gives him a new fresh 45 seconds. It's the second time they've been able to do that. And in a tight ball game, that's crucial. Haywood's got to put a body on him when the ball goes up on the glass. He's got to put a body on him because he attacks the glass with great tenacity. 20 on the shot clock. <laughs> Brian Hill inside is fouled by Rodney Haywood. Boy, I'll tell you. Fourth personal on Haywood. That's 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 really tough playing good defense for for all that long a period of time and then uh, picking up a little tic tac foul uh, as Haywood did is really tough to take I guess Rodney is replaced by Brett Etherington Etherington giving them a little more size and a little more outside shooting ability 18 points for Brian Hill rebound Etherington after the first miss from the line by Brian Hill. Now I think you can look for Butler to try and... Carafa forced the foul on Brian Hill. <laughs> I was going to say they were going to try and the old play that's worked for him all afternoon getting into J.P. Burns, Burns, but <clears throat> Carafa, of course, drove across the middle and picked up the foul. Let's see if he can convert the free throws. That's four fouls on Brian Hill. And Chris Mack comes back in, replacing Sasha Hoopman. So you've got Hill with four, Schreppler with four, and Mack with three for Evansville. Haywood on the bench with four, and Littrell on the bench with four for Butler. Carafa crawls at home. They remain perfect at the foul line. In the second half, John Carafa getting his first point, a junior out of Noblesville, Indiana. Well, I'll tell you, I think Hill has been the key player for Evansville down the stretch here. And certainly, uh, if he picks up a fifth foul, it could be detrimental uh, for the Aces. Let's see it. Let's look and see how Butler attacks offensively on the other end after this offensive sequence by Evansville. I would guess from Jim Crew's point of view, you're under four minutes to play. You just go with the guy with the four personals oh. because of his impact oh. for your team. Oh, absolutely. Both he and Schreffler both. Schreffler on the dribble. 15 on the shot clock. Under 10 on the shot clock. Brand will fire a long three. Rebound, Etherington, and fouled by Chris Mack. Wow. Well, they wanted to run the clock down, but they didn't want Larry Brand shooting a 19-20-footer. No, I don't think that's the shot that they were looking for in that particular instance. The player they really want to get the ball to is either Schreffler or Hill. And neither one of them were able to get open there, and they got caught with time on the, uh, a few seconds on the clock and had to take the long shot. Now, Barry Collier into the offensive and defensive substitution. Shoop goes down, and Tim Bowen comes back in to clamp the defense on Schreffler as Brett Etherington goes to the line for a one-and-one. One. Shoop done a real nice job for the Bulldogs while he was in there. 
short foul shot, but the rebound belongs to Butler. That's the first miss in the second half at the line by Butler. It's a five-point ball game with exactly three minutes to play. Now I think you'll see Evansville pack it, up, pack it in, especially when Bowen has his hands on the basketball. They're trying to find J.P. Brenz down inside. Now Larry Brand is the guy guarding Brenz. He's double teamed. Still 20 seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Two and a half on the game clock. Bowen's pass inside to Brenz. No. Rebound Etherington. No oh. rebound Matt. Boy. And Brenz with the foul. Boy, the Butler bench went crazy. Brenz felt he was shoved by Larry Brand and didn't get the call. Well, they had two opportunities. Barry, of course, has been upset all afternoon. Uh, with the officials uh, the way they've called this particular game, but well, they had two opportunities there to get down the shot uh, Really what made that play was a really nice entry from Bowen uh, Into uh, J. P. Brenz who was not able to convert But they did get an offensive rebound and of course didn't even draw iron uh, on the shot on the second shot Big play Evansville has missed six of their 16 free throw attempts here in the second half and you're talking about an outstanding free throw shooting team. Mack makes that one. He's now two of three at the line, six points in the ball game, and a six point Evansville lead. Shot. Shot. Fifty-four forty-seven, two twenty to play. Archbold on the move, down the lane, over Hill, yes. And Butler calls time. Darren Archbold into double figures with 10. Butler hanging in with 2.06 to play in the ball game. Evansville leads by five. I'm Tim Simmons, State Farm Agent. One day, my policyholders got the back of their family car banged up. But Van and Mary and the boys didn't have to miss any family outings. They reported their claim directly to me. Our claims people were on the job pronto, so that Van and Mary could get their car fixed fast. Now they know why more people think that State Farm is the best buying car insurance. We keep things moving, so you can keep your family moving. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Elsewhere tonight in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference, Dayton and Marquette in a big ball game. Likewise for the St. Louis Billikens as they host Detroit. Detroit knocked off Evansville here in overtime Thursday night. The Billikens trying to hang on to second place behind the Xavier Musketeers. Four weeks ago, these two teams played a five-point ball game at Butler. We've got a five-point ball game here with just under two minutes to play. Right. Butler, of course, had a real good opportunity to win that game, and they're going to have an opportunity to win this one, too, I, I think. Mack being pressured by Carafa just beat the five-second call with the pass to Brand. I think what they're going to try and do is get this clock run down and really look at the hill inside. Outside, John Carafa trying to Help the officials saying he fouled me and they said no you fouled him and Chris Mack who hit a couple of free throws a few moments ago will go back to the line. Well I guess one thing about the officiating we can say that they've been calling them close but at least they've been consistent with it. 12 of 18 in the second half for Evansville at the line. Darren Archbold will return for Butler in the offensive-defensive substitutions. And Tim Bowen sits down. One, gentlemen, one. Oh. 
A nine point ball game. A seven point second half for Chris Mack. Inside, not a good pass, no, but Etherington got it back and got to Brenz, who was fouled by Chaka Chandler, but Brenz couldn't get the shot to drop. Well, they were real, really fortunate there to uh, get the basketball back and have an opera, another opportunity to take it to the cup. Here from the top, there's the second part of the play. JP inside, of course, gets clobbered there by Shaka Khan. Really a good foul. Just make him make the two instead of giving him the two. That's right. Well, he's been able to do it so far. 18 points in the ball game. He had his career high. Of course, he's just a freshman with a 26-point effort against Illinois Chicago earlier in the year. Well, we've seen some outstanding freshmen in this league. Melvin Robinson, of course, in St. Louis. Uh, Shasha uh, here. But this Brins, he's been the most outstanding player I've seen so far in this league. For its freshman up in Shreffler going to the hoop. And either Brins or Shoot fouled him. It will be on J.P. Brins. Here's Scheffler taking all the way to the hoop. It's a good call by the officials. It was, it was blocked below the rim, but you just can't let a player from way out on top of the key drive all the way to the hoop uncontested like that, especially with one minute and 18 seconds to go in the ball game. Schreffler, the leading scorer with 22 points on the afternoon. Coming off a... Good performance Thursday night against Detroit when he scored 24. 115 to play. They're going to have to hurry if they want to get some points and get back in it. Well, they're going to make Bowen take they're, the they're shot. They're just sagging completely off him. A three well off the mark by shoot. Brian Hill with the rebound. Gets it ahead to Mack, and now the Aces will just try and run time off the clock. Treffler yeah. fouled by Tim Bowen. That's, I don't think foul is going to be no good proposition for Butler, especially fouling Scheffler. Schreffler has hit his last five in a row after going two for four in a sequence of four technical free throws. He's got 26 points this afternoon. He's really played a real good ball game. Um, Offensively, really outstanding offensively, and really has worked hard defensively. Here we have a timeout. Timeout called. It's an eight point advantage for Evansville. While we've got a chance here, we want to remind you this has been a presentation of Creative Sports Marketing. The executive producer has been Mike Wells. The coordinating producer has been Jim Roller. Our producer for today's game has been Ken Dennis, our director, Gary Clem, associate director, Rebecca Malone, and the facilities coordinator has been Ann Crago. As we show you the names and credits of the other people who've made this broadcast possible, we want to thank all of them for a job well done. In addition, we want to thank the Director of Athletics at the University of Evansville, James Byers, Head Coach Jim Cruz, his staff, and Sports Information Director Bob Boxell. We'd also like to thank the Director of Athletics at Butler University, William Sylvester, the Head Coach Barry Collier, his staff, and Sports Information Director Jim McGrath. Our technical facilities today have been provided by SureShot Teleproductions of New Springfield, Ohio. Transmission facilities provided by UpSouth Corporation of Atlanta, Georgia. 59-51 with 55 seconds to go in this one. Barry Collier trying to map some strategy to come up with a big comeback for his Butler club. For Evansville, it looks like they're going to hang on and get a victory they really needed to get. As you see, Dan Godfrey, the guy right there on the crutches around the outside of the Aces huddle. What a difference he would have made for this Evansville team had he been healthy oh, all year. And no question about it, Jack. He's a tremendous kid. It was a devastating loss for him. Uh, talking to Jim Cruz yesterday, uh, he thought that the team could have won 20 ball games by now with the addition of Dan Godfrey being on the team. But, you know, that's that's the game of basketball. But they've done a good job this afternoon of keeping their composure, which they haven't done a good job of the last three times they've played. And, uh, but the Butler team has worked hard. And let's uh, just see if they can finish this out, uh, probably from the free throw line.
Archbold against Brian Hill. Good move. We'll go all the way to the basket. Have a clock. The ball loose on the floor to Schreffler. Chandler is fouled by John Shoup, and Chaka will shoot a one and one. Foul on Shoup is his second of the ball game. Boy, you know, from a from a spectator's point of view, this has really been a fun ball game to watch. It's really fun to see two teams go out and hustle uh, and give everything they have, both offensively and defensively, and certainly these two teams have done that this afternoon. Chandler hits the front end of the one and one. He has got five points in the ball game. It'll look a lot different in the paper tomorrow in terms of the margin of victory. But Evansville knows that Butler had a chance to win this game down the stretch. They certainly did. And maybe if they could have converted a few more free throws in the first half, it would have been a different ball game. John Shoup gets the basket. He'll get one more as Larry Brand commits the personal foul. While we've got a chance here, let's recognize our Coors Light player of the game. And he is sophomore guard Scott Schreffler, who poured in 28 points on the afternoon. Scott Schreffler, our Coors Light player of the game. Tim Bowen comes back in. And Bren sits out. Six points for Shoup. Half a minute to play. They foul Hill immediately, one and one. Brian has hit five of six at the foul line. Now Brenz will come right back in. There's Pete, JP coming back in. From here, Butler will go back home for a game with Indiana State next week and then finish out the rest of the way in the MCC at Detroit and then the home games with Dayton and Xavier before finishing the regular season at Marquette. Well, certainly we've talked about J.P. Brins all day and he's going to be the player of the future for the Butler Bulldogs and if they can get some other players to complement his ability uh, they're going to be a force in years to come. And I think by the time he's a senior Mr. Tim Bowen's going to be a handful for a lot of people with his quickness in that point guard spot. I think so. If he can continue to improve. Archbold for a three. Rebound Mack. Lost the ball. Etherington picked it up and got fouled by Chaka Chandler. There was good hustle by both teams. Evansville, of course, had the ball and lost it. Butler picked it up and saw Chaka Chandler come from behind to foul Etherington. The last 13 points of this game have been at the foul line for Evansville. Butler has had its share of free throw opportunities in the second half. Etherington gets his first point. He's now one of two at the line. Barry Kell, you're still making the substitution, still coaching right down to that final tick on the clock. That's well, what you have to do. He ain't giving up. Mack tied up. No, Archbold with the foul. So Chris Mack will get more free throws down at the other end. Evansville has made 12 consecutive free throws. Well, certainly we knew it was going to be a bad proposition for Butler with about a minute to go on the clock or less than a minute to go. And we knew they had to foul after if, in fact, they converted offensively because Evansville has been shooting the ball well from the free throw line all year. Mack with a chance to go into double figures. Five of six at the line. I really like this kid, Mack. I really, I really like the way he helms himself on the basketball court. I really think he's got a bright future. I love the way he strokes the ball. He's got a real nice looking shot. Good rotation on the ball. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, real nice. Mack with 11. 66-55. Final 10 ticks on the clock in this one. Evansville will go to 14 and 11, 6 and 3 in the conference. Bowen misses the three. Etherington's follow. Archbold's follow will count. And that will do it for the final score here at Evansville as the Aces end their three-game losing streak.
and beat Butler 66 to 57. Butler drops to 4 and 18 on the year. For George McGinnis, I'm Jack Corgan. So long, everybody. Napier University. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. By Kite Home Center, where they help you help yourself. By Robert John and Associates. By Kings, nobody beats Kings deal. By Pepsi, the taste that's generations ahead. And by WFIE-TV. It's the fourth consecutive sellout crowd here at the Cincinnati Gardens tonight. Midwestern Collegiate Conference basketball, the 22nd. Xavier Musketeers play host to the University of Evansville. Hello, everyone. I'm Dean Webster. Alongside tonight is Dan Katz. And Dan, the uh, Musketeers, awfully tough to play here. A very good team, rated in most everyone's poll. And mainly it's because they've got two very big guys inside. That's right. They've won 27 in a row here. They're really tough to beat. Tyrone Hill and Derek Strong are the main men. Tea time with Tyrone Hill. He averages 20.9 points a game and 13 rebounds a game. Uh, Derek Strong, 14 points a game, 10 and a half rebounds a game. Tyron Hill had a great game against the Aces back at Robert Stadium. Derek Strong, on the other hand, didn't have such a good game, and the Aces are hoping that the same holds true here tonight. That would help them a lot. What will the Aces have to do tonight against Xavier to stop them again? Well, the Aces are definitely going to have to dictate the tempo. They're going to have to play it at their own pace. But as talking to Woody Wilson before the game, he said if the Aces get the break opportunity, they're going to have to take advantage of it. They're going to have to shoot really well, too. All right. We're coming back with the introduction of players and the opening tip-off. We're in Cincinnati, where the Aces will get ready to take on the Musketeers, and we'll be back with that player introductions and the first half tip-off right after this. Get total control of your business finances on demand. Up to the minute accounts of your transactions in an instant. Introducing InTouch Cash Manager from Old National Bank, the area's first direct access business banking system. All you need is a PC, InTouch software, and a business. Your bank is now open. For more information about InTouch, see your Old National Banker at your bank for life. At Ponderosa Steakhouse, we know what you want. More. Everybody wants more of something. Everybody wants more. Everybody wants more of something. So we give you something more. Try Ponderosa's Kansas City Strip Dinner, including a baked potato and the all-you-can-eat grand buffet. At a price like this, what more could you want? Everybody wants more of something. Everybody wants more. Ponderosa, we give you something more. Now, to tell us about the deal all Owensboro is waiting for, here's the green light man himself, Don Moore. Thanks, Don. Our green light specials are new Chevy Cavaliers, one of America's most popular cars, delivering real Chevy value. And a green light special price for first-time buyers is just $74.95, or just $169 per month with no money down. Chevy Cavaliers, only $74.95. This week's green light special at Don Moore Chevrolet. So come on down. Our national resources supply America with the fuel we need as a nation. And of those resources, the most important is our people. Their commitment keeps us going strong. Today, many oil companies have foreign ownership, but Marathon is 100% American owned and operated. So when you fill up at a Marathon station, you're helping to fuel the American economy. Marathon, an American company serving America. The University of Evansville Purple Aces snapped a 12-game winning streak by the Musketeers earlier this season at Roberts Stadium as the Aces beat the Muskies. This time it's a seven-game winning streak for the Musketeers as the Aces will again try to knock off the top team in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. And unfortunately, Dean, for Xavier, they've got the revenge factor going. They uh, lost to Evansville, of course, last month. They'll be thinking about uh, a little revenge there. And they are nearly unstoppable here in the Gardens. They are 106-8 and eight over the last eight years. And Pete Gillen, 
coach of Xavier has lost but one time here at the Gardens at home, and that was the first game he coached here. He hasn't lost any since. He's done pretty well then. What what does uh, Evansville have to do tonight? I mean, they've, they've got to, you know, we talked a little bit in the pregame about, you know, worrying about the tempo, but, I mean, there's more than Tyrone Hill and, uh, and Derek Strong on this team. Well, they're going to have to hope that the outside shooting for Xavier is not very good. Uh, and that's what happened the first that's game. That's what happened the first time. You, you just don't think it's going to happen twice, but maybe maybe it will. They also are going to have to, uh, again, stay with them on the board. That's going to be difficult, but that will be a key. As you know, Xavier is a great rebounding team. They lead the conference with 12.2 rebounds a game. Evansville is second, but they're 10 boards behind them. <laughs> That Gentlemen, the welcome to the Cincinnati Gardens for tonight's contest between the University of Evansville Aces and your defending Midwestern Collegiate Conference champion, Xavier University Musketeers. And now let's meet this evening's starting lineups. First, for the Aces from the University of Evansville. A 6'5", sophomore forward from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 34, Chris Mack. A 6'7", senior forward from Baltimore, Maryland, number 42, Ryan Hill. A 6'9", junior center from Lafayette, Indiana, number 33, Mark Jewell. 6'4", freshman guard from Columbus, Ohio, number five, Shaka Chandler. And a 6'1", sophomore guard from Stoneford, Illinois, number 20, Scott Schreffler. Evansville's head coach is Jim Cruz, and his assistants are Steve Bennett, Kurt Sarf, and Woody Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your senior university Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 20, Michael Davenport. A 6'10", senior forward from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 42, Tyrone Hill. A 6'10", senior center from Los Angeles, California, number 33, Derek Strong. New York, number 10, Jamal Walker. And a six-foot freshman guard from Moraine, Ohio, number 22, Jamie Gladden. Xavier's head coach is Pete Gillen, and his assistants are Dino Gaudio, Skip Rosser, Conte Stamas, and Mike Moses. This is why this game is so important. The Xavier Musketeers are eight and one on the season in the conference. Xavier, uh, St. St. Louis is one game back. And of course the Aces two games back. So a win tonight and St. Louis will be taking on Dayton tonight. That's up in Dayton. So the top four teams will be playing each other. So tonight's game, very, very important as the Aces can get back into uh, a tie for second place with a win. And St. Louis would really be rooting for the Aces tonight. And there is the rest of the standings. Marquette also at five and four. Loyola, Detroit, and Butler. UE would like to create a log jam in the standings. Uh, they would like to create some havoc. You see Mark Jewell, who is, uh, was sidelined with the broken foot. He is back. He was out nine games. This is his third game back. But he is in there, Dan, because of an injury. Well, Larry Brandon practiced on Monday, slightly pulled his hamstring. Obviously, it uh, hasn't repaired itself enough for him to be able to play. We'll have to see what kind of action he gets in here later in the game. They have already set an attendance record here at the Cincinnati Gardens in 12 home games. This is their 13th. They hope it's a lucky one, and it's a fourth consecutive sellout, and everyone in the place is on, they're on their feet. Aces would like to give Jim Cruz a happy 36th birthday present, probably be one of the best presents he's ever received. A very loose Jim Cruz before the game. He probably hopes he has a good birthday. And we are ready for action, and Xavier takes control right off the bat. As Dan mentioned, the Aces will have to give a few shots from the outside to the Musketeers, and 
That is where Xavier hopes they can knock it down. Davenport did a lot of damage in the stadium. They're playing a man-to-man. And Mike Sands there gets Jamal Walker for traveling on the baseline. So the Aces defense packed in, playing it tight, giving the outside shot. Xavier trying to force it in maybe a little bit. Hopefully that's an omen for the Aces. And as we expected, 94 feet. The Musketeers will make sure that Scott Schreppler will sleep well tonight. Close to an over and back there, Dean. Chandler came from the front court into the back court. Chris Mack had an excellent game the first time in the stadium. 20 points, double figure and rebounds. Schreppler has been the ace's gun lately. Guns that one, but comes up dry. Jamie Gladden already has more points now than when they played in the stadium the first time. Gladden with the first two points of the game and the Musketeers jump on top. Xavier really tightening up the defense and a near steal by Walker. Mark Jewell probably just getting back into shape. And looking in shape and looking very fit on that one was Brian Hill to tie things. Xavier may be overplaying the defense a little bit and Hill got three down low. Walker reluctant to take the shot. Davenport trying to uh, worm his way down the lane. This is Davenport. He's not afraid to shoot it from outside. Comes up empty this time. Davenport really riddled the aces in uh, the stadium as he rattled home three-pointer after three-pointer early in the game that kept Xavier in it. And Rip Hatfield says, that is a foul on you, Jamal Walker. Chaka trying, trying to penetrate inside that time. They really need a good shooting night out of Chaka. Chaka has to create a little bit and take some of the pressure off Schreffler, doesn't he, a little bit? He really does. The Aces will run the clock. Chaka's open. Chaka said, maybe that's just a step out of my range. So far, the Aces haven't got uh, double teamed. And foul. A charging foul, and no argument there on either part of Chris Mack or the coaches. Aces appear early to be trying to get it inside. They've gotten their buckets from Brian Hill, and Chaka tried to go in, and Mack trying to go in that time. So that appears to be their strategy right off the bat. The Aces uh, dropping back in that 2-3 zone, and they're matching up a little bit out of it. This is Tyrone Hill, an All-American candidate. And Gary Muncy has whistled Brian Hill for his first foul. It's another thing the Aces have to avoid foul trouble tonight if they have any hopes of winning this one. There's no doubt we'll see Sasha Hoopman, the big freshman. There is a play Hill again where... Got him on the hands. Davenport from outside for three, and again, he misses. So the Aces have to give up some outside shots. And if uh, the coaching staff very honest about it, if they hit him, they said, we're probably not going to win. So far, Xavier unable to come up with those outside shots. And don't think they, uh, they realize they're going to hit a few of them. That would work right into the Aces game plan if he keeps missing shots. The Trumpler's got to hit them. Here comes the baseball pass. Tyrone Hill looked like Joe Montana on that one. And Jamal Walker played Jerry Rice. Well, it really didn't look like there was an open man there. The Aces really had the advantage down, down there, but and Chaka, Chuck was a little too aggressive. Chaka Chandler looked like Ronnie Lott. Yeah. <laughs> we are early in this game. 2-2. 16.45 left. Jim Cruz up shouting some defensive instructions. Gladden out of the corner for two points. And boy, there are the meat hooks of Tyrone Hill. And he has his first two points of the night. That's what he does best. When he gets his hands on the ball, nobody's going to knock it out of there. It's extremely strong. Again, the Aces solved the token pressure by the Musketeers. 
Mack had an excellent game at the stadium, and he's off to a good start here, tying things up at four. Jamal Walker has been red hot lately. Two weeks ago, he was the MCC Player of the Week. He did not shoot the ball very well against U of E in game one of these two teams. They played three times last year, Xavier having the two to one advantage. Tyrone drives the lane. Great move. And he has four points. Aces are definitely giving uh, giving up the outside shot, but so far they've missed him. Oh, there is what the Aces coaching staff said. When there is an advantage there, we've got to take it. And Hill did. <laughs> Chaka getting it up on the board. Gladden again, a little reluctant to take the outside shot, and with all the other offensive uh, arsenal that's there, it's easy to see why. Davenport for his third three-pointer of the game, and this time he hits it, and the Musketeers take a 9-6 to six lead. Well, Davenport averaging 14 points a game, so he's going to get his. Chris Mack says, let's get this thing across the 10-second line. So far, I think the tempo is the kind the Aces like. It's, it's almost a little quick for the Aces and a little slow for Xavier. They've kind of come to a happy medium. They've just got to nail those open shots. Gladden this time, not reluctant to take it, and he misses. They're letting him have it. There is no doubt the Aces will give up that uh, outside shot to Jamie Gladden, and so far Gladden reluctant to take it and finally pulls the trigger and comes up empty. Great pick. And Tyrone Hill should have uh, shouted out a pick call there, and Jamie Gladden just leveled Brian Hill. See, comes over Hill, just stands right there and knocks him to the floor. We have 14-15 left in this game, and the Aces trailed the Musketeers 9-6. to So your Ford F-150 has more standard power than the Chevy. Yeah. And more torque for towing. Right. And your Ford with an automatic and a V8 costs less than a Chevy automatic and a V6. It's true. And those aren't the reasons you bought the Ford. No. F-150, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. So why did you? Well, after the rain stops, you can almost hear you, Chevy Rustin. <laughs> I know you hate riding up front. Look, we do this every spring. Before we plant corn, we go to town and pick up Larry at Herbicide. We put it in the back and carry it home. Will you let me finish? We need Lariat. It controls the weeds in our corn. Lariat's the one pass performer, so we're through in a hurry. We take back the empty shuttle, then you get to ride in the back again, and you're happy. <laughs> With Lariat, I get clean corn, and I'm happy. This memory is brought to you by Unical. Since 1951, we fueled more NASCAR winners than all other gasolines combined. And we put that same high performance and winning spirit in the gasolines for your car. What'd you say we take her for a spin, Murph? Richard. How you been doing? Ace is working it inside. Chaka Chandler drives the lane, puts up the shot. Missed, but there's Brian Hill right there for the slam. The Aces taking advantage of what Xavier will give them. Hill, four points on two jams. <laughs> Tyrone Hill, four points to lead the Musketeers. The Aces only shooting 43% on three of seven. Xavier, four of eight for 50%. Derek Strong has entered the game now. He's in there with uh, Williams. Williams checks in for Tyrone Hill. He, he's getting a breather. The guards are the same, and Gladden... Uh, and Walker. That was a bad pass. No call. No my. Aces might have got away with a the break there, Dan. Yeah, it looks like it. Crowd doesn't like it. But Chalk on the other end really forced the pass. Treffler in position. And then it's really hard to tell when the ball goes out. 
Brian Hill hitting a pull-up. Great pass by Schreffler. Brian with six points. He has six of the aces eight. They're really playing off Jamie Gladden. Generous. He's wide open. It's interesting to see the, the uh, Musketeers substituting Tyrone Hill so early. Bringing in Aaron Williams. It's the second foul on Chaka and the fourth on the Aces. Aces can't afford, as you said, to get into any kind of foul trouble. It's kind of hard to believe they took Tyrone Hill out. He had four rebounds, and those were the four rebounds Xavier's had. So Pete Gillen is saying something to him right now. He must have obviously not liked something he was doing. Jamie Gladden with his third point of the night and gives X a two-point lead. Gladden hits the second free throw. He's a 76% free throw shooter. And Xavier again with the full court pressure. They would like to force some turnovers out of it, but it's basically just to speed up the tempo a little bit. I think uh, Shreffler got away with a walk. But maybe that was a makeup call. Sasha Hootman will check in, and Mark Jewell will probably take a breather. Mark's still trying to get back into playing shape. Being out nine games and I guess about four or five weeks, that'll really take it out of you. No doubt. Aces with three turnovers, and they certainly need to cut down on turnovers if they hope to win. Aces trailing it by three, 11 to eight. Xavier with the ball. This is Derek Strong. A strong looking shot there. Nice stroke. And it's 13 to 8. Schreffler working on Gladden. Breaks the 10 second line and works on Williams. That's an awfully smart play there. Great play by Schreffler. There were bodies flying by him <laughs> left and right. <laughs> Looked like one of those video games when you're playing the car and the too bad he didn't convert it. He did get the foul on Derek Strong, and that's Strong's first, and they said he wasn't shooting. Said it was on the floor, so no shots will be taken. We knew we weren't going to see uh, Tyrone Hill stay on the He's bench back. He made his 64th consecutive start tonight. He's played a lot of games. He has started 109 out of the 115 games he has played here at Xavier. Near steal. Tyrone almost with the steal. And now Davenport has it. Here comes Xavier. Nice. Good steal by Schreffler. Back ahead of the field, and he's going to jam it. And he does. Great play by Schreffler's really playing a nice game so far. He's really got good vision on everything, seeing it both offensively and defensively. Aces, however, have forced a couple of really questionable passes inside. But it just shows they are trying to get it in. Outside is Davenport, and Davenport misses again. He's one for four out there. Checking in now for Xavier, Colin Parker. Parker is a three-point gun. He's taken more three-point three shots than two-point shots. He is number 30, and he's on Mac right now. It doesn't even seem like the Aces are trying for any outside shots. Everything they're doing is going inside. It's got to start inside with uh, Brian Hill, and he tries to pull people off of uh, Schreffler a little bit. And Jamal Walker back in the game. Chaka comes off the screen, but Brian Hill says, you're not open enough for me to pass it to him. It's the awfully, third time Chaka's done that. Awfully quick hands. We saw Shane Barrett against Xavier the first game. Shane got a start because on Saturday against Butler because he delivers the ball so well. This is Parker outside and can't get it. Williams with the tip and the tip in, I think, goes to Davenport. Aaron Williams, uh, a freshman, has done very nice things for Xavier so far. So the Aces turning the ball over a little bit now. Xavier has a lot of good athletes and very quick hands. Nice play by Sasha Hoopman. That's an excellent, you know, that whole play there is made by the entry pass. 
sausages turn and puts it in off the glass. It's nice to see him hit his first shot. Maybe it'll give him a little confidence. And Davenport now reluctant to take the outside shot. This is Walker. He gets inside. Oh, and... oh, oh what a play by Davenport. Oh, my. What an athlete Davenport is and really showed it there. That got the crowd going. And now you do something positive on the offensive end and then come back and make a silly foul. Four team, or uh, make that three team fouls now. That is four. Davenport has his first. And we've got timeout again. Right now, we have a five point advantage for Xavier, 17 to 12. And we'll be back right after this. stand up to this kind of punishment, you'd call a great mower. But do it with a mower that's 15 years old, you'd have to call it a snapper. Rural King Supply Stores, Keister's Hardware, Taylor's Lawnmower, and Chainsaw Center. In the land of Dairy Queen. The Dairy Queen Homestyle Burger is the biggest regular size burger in the business. I didn't know that. And right now it's on sale for just 59 cents. You're kidding. Only 59 cents for a big burger like that? You see, Dairy Queen doesn't even sell little bitty burgers. Well, you ought to tell people how big the DQ Homestyle Burger really is. That's why we're having this 59 cent burger sale. Oh, good idea. We treat you right. There's a five-point advantage for Xavier here in the Cincinnati Gardens on the scoreboard. Up at Dayton, it's a different story as St. Louis leading Dayton. It two by five, 42-37. That's at the half. St. Louis leading Dayton by five at the half. So we want to keep our eye on that game. St. Louis would need to win there with an Aces victory here over Xavier. That would put St. Louis tied for first place, and that would make uh, the Aces the uh, sole beneficiary of second place. Here's that follow bucket by Davenport, and it got the crowd going. Davenport, seven points so far. Hill leads the Aces with six. Aces have really improved their shooting, though. They're up to 60% on six of 10, but most of their buckets have come from about three inches in. <laughs> We've had a uh, few jams, and we had mentioned that on Saturday, Shane Barrett got a start because he delivers the ball to Scott Schreffler so well, and Shane has entered the game for Chaka Chandler. Nice move by the, or Mac. And Mac just seems like he plays well against yeah. Xavier. He's, he's home. He's in his hometown, so that may be good point. Incentive. He's probably got a lot of uh, friends, and I know family here. Saw his mom and dad before the game. Loose ball picked up by, finally by Parker. Mack played some great defense on Tyrone Hill that time. Strong and Hill. Great. Hill doubles down with Chandler on Strong, and that's what the Aces are going to do. Musketeers third turnover, and they played some great interior defense. Hootman really tough inside. Strong has really had a tough time against the Aces. You can see no him just shuffling He's his feet. Him, and he's shoving Hootman back. And Tyrone Hill with the reach will pick up play foul. That pretty, is his first. Probably pretty unusual for him to get him that far out. Yeah, I, 15 foul. I think uh, Pete Gillen said, "You're big guy. You're 45 feet from the bucket. Yeah, let's get a foul when you're uh, four or five feet." Schreffler will pull up for the three, and he nails it. And the Aces have tied it at 17. It's wide open. Scott does not hesitate at all to pull it from three. He doesn't hesitate to pull it from anywhere. Shane Barrett in the lineup. Sherrett, uh, Shane is the uh, the soccer player for the Aces, and he looks like he kind of got over there. Tried to go for the takedown. Kind of kicked that ball away. 15 foul on the Aces. Both teams have committed five, so we look like we might be getting to the one-on-one -on -one with both teams here soon. Again, Larry Brand uh, probably won't see action. They thought if he did not start that he probably wouldn't play because they got him good and loose over there on the bench uh, and got him good and loose in the warm-ups, trying to get him into the game. Of course, Larry played the first game against uh, 
and started against Xavier. But he is on the bench right now, and Mark Jewell got the start. But in there now is Sasha Hoopman. And you got to believe the Aces like the way things are developing at this point. A tight ball game, rather low scoring. They're using patience and scoring inside. The Aces again break the pressure with Barrett. Oh. Over the back, picking up the foul. I guess when you're 7 2 and the guy in front of you is 6 10, you can see over his head. Maybe you think you can get that ball. But 99% of the time, they're going to call that foul. Let's take a look at it. Did he get him? Well, Hill with position and strong with position. And it was close, but anytime you are standing right behind the guy's back, chances are you're going to get nailed. Especially by the underneath official, and that is the 16 foul. So Xavier will now be in the one on one on the next foul. Into Tyrone. He's looking, he's looking to travel, is what Mike Sanzier says. And probably lucky he didn't get a charge. He just lowered that shoulder right into Hoopman. They are converging on Hill like flies. That's the fourth turnover on Xavier. And another one on the Aces, number six. Jim Cruz stood up and said, throw it long, and uh, that's what Mack did. But unfortunately, Hill got back there. Great athletes on this team. Strong. Oh, my. Brian Hill leaped out of the building for that one. Jim Cruz giving some quick instructions to Shane Barrett. Probably said, let's get that ball to Schreffler. And he delivers it. Oh, great pass by Schreffler inside the Mac, and he got banged up pretty good down there. That is Maurice Brantley out of Belleville, Michigan, picking up the foul. His first. He is a six, six and a half, 210 pound freshman out of Belleville. Mac got his head pull, pulled back. Yeah, he did. A little whiplash on that play. We saw this a couple of years ago when the uh, Aces did this pretty much all season. They did it the first time against Xavier. They just pull everybody back off the free throw line. Interesting strategy. They figure they're not going to get a rebound anyway, so why not get everybody back and... Uh, Give them a little rest. Yeah, exactly. Chris Mack hit the first free throw. Chris has been hot. He's hit 10 of his last 11 free throws now. Here's on the way to a good game. It was seven point for Chris. We must have jinxed him. Into Hill again. Looked like pretty good defense. Sure did. And Jim Cruz thought it was pretty good defense, too. Mike Sanzier with the call. There must have been about four people between Sanzier and where the foul was committed, but Mike says that was a foul. He left his feet. That's probably what got him. Second foul on Mark Jewell. Brian Hill. They gave that one to Brian Hill. Boy, that's really that's a tough call. I, well, we didn't. I didn't see it then. I didn't see that angle. I didn't see that foul at all. You're right. Jamal Walker cashes in both, and Xavier leads it by a deuce now. Walker, a 71% free throw shooter, and he connected on them both. Barrett at 5'8". Had a tough time coming up with that Almost one. Almost got run over. Jewel thought about it. Barrett says, here, big guy, I'll get it in there to you. Just, just keep trying. Shane has pretty good vision, despite being 5'8". Uh, Not on that pass. Shane says, hey, that Xavier guy tipped it out of bounds, but not so, says the officials. We have 7.52 left in the half. The Aces trailing it 20 to 18. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Mullins are on the march for the $2 meal deal. Dad hands out the ammunition. Just $2 per person buys a meal for every Mullin. Two pieces of the Colonel's chicken, hot mashed potatoes and gravy, and a buttermilk biscuit for only $2 per person. Those Mullins don't miss a trick. Have you seen my mommy and daddy? I think they're over there. Everyone knows where to go. Kentucky Fried Chicken for the $2 meal deal. For one and for all. Uncle Lou, why do you think of that new Diet Pepsi? 
Well, are you nuts? I love this new Diet Pepsi so much better than Diet Coke that I would rather you drop the bowling ball on my tongue than I don't have my Diet Pepsi. I'd rather have a, a rash that I can't reach. I'd rather my mother-in-law come back to life. Ooh, I would rather eat lint than not have my Diet Pepsi. You understand? Yeah, you love the new Diet Pepsi. <sighs> what? New Diet Pepsi with 100% NutraSweet, the taste that beats Diet Coke. Back in the Cincinnati Gardens where the Aces are trailing it by a deuce and some uh, shooting percentages. You gotta like the trend here. The Aces now up to 67% from the field, eight of 12, and Xavier down to 48, seven of 16. And they're uh, even on the boards. Uh, seven for the Aces and seven rebounds for Xavier. Leading the way for UE as he did uh, at Robert Stadium against the Musketeers. Chris Mack, seven points. Davenport, who's been quiet for a little while, has seven. You know, Xavier has shot six free throws so far. You know how many they shot at the stadium uh, back when they played? They shot six for the whole game. So uh, Xavier has to like what they see, getting the ball inside a little bit. Also getting the Aces into a little bit of foul trouble. Because Brian Hill has a couple, and so does Chaka Chandler. Well, that's something. They're going to have to, just coming down the stretch of the first half here, avoid the fouls. And Chandler checks out, and Schreffler is back in. Crowd trying to get with it a little bit. They are all over Tyrone Hill. Mack, Schreffler didn't see Mack, and Mack with the steal. Mack really tried to get the outlet pass to Schreffler, and Scott didn't see it. Didn't You're see right. It. Mark Jewell, when he is set, will take that outside shot. Didn't feel like he had it that time. That was a tough shot. Almost looked like he got shoved a little bit. That's almost where Brian needs to take that extra step and just go on up and jam it. Yeah. There's Tyrone off the baseline. And the All-American candidate pops it home, and Jim Cruz stands up and says, who's got him there? Yeah, he'll score from there most every time when he's open, and he has six points. And Derek Strong, who fouled out the first time these two teams met, is running into frustration again tonight as he picks up a second foul. Hoopman there comes going inside and uh, gets nailed on the hand, and Hoopman will go to the line with the one and one. Or will that be a two-shot foul? He's going to shoot two, you're right. Sasha's free throw shooting percentage, 63%. Not too bad for the big guy. In a very unique form on the line as well. See, the Aces have used it prior to this year with, uh, with Olaf Bopp. Maybe that's helpful for the big guys. Well, they're closer to the basket than most people. And Sasha will get to shoot another one as I think uh, about three of the five Xavier players jumped in there. Maybe because they didn't see any purple shirts around, they kind of got a little uh, mixed up a little bit. The ace is back again down the other end of the court. Treffler ran down there and told Sasha, said, hey, hit this one. We need the points. Aces trailed by four, 22-18. And Sasha missed all three of them. Well, that's too bad. Boy, did Walker get up. Nice shot. And a nice arching shot over Schreffler and Sasha Hoopman. He's got four, and he can definitely get up high. And Walker with the steal. And now the crowd's into it, Dean. And Jim Cruz is really upset that Walker was uh, pushing his player. We've got a good one, 26-18, Xavier leading it. Pizza from Pizza Hut. Now get one medium for $8.99 or two for just $4 more. Mom, I can't 
can't bring anyone to the house. Joe, you just aren't doing the job. As your doctor, I have to tell you that your health is in jeopardy. Your job, family, and health. It can take everything that is important to you, even your life. Chemical dependency is an illness, but treatment works and recovery is successful. When you've had enough, call the Deaconess Recovery Center. It just might change your life. We left you with Jim Cruz complaining to the officials. Jamal Walker with the right hand there. I think that's what Jim Cruz was complaining about, saying he got uh, Shreffler, but it looked fairly clean. But I think it looked like he traveled when he got up. Or the travel right here, it looked like. Very good yeah. hustle as Gladden goes ahead and lays it in. Good hustle by both teams. Ace is now 8 of 12, still 67%. We saw briefly a, a, a shot there that said, it's not Mac tonight, meaning Chris Mack, and probably some of his Cincinnati buddies. Of course, it was a very much a Chris Mack night the first time these two teams got together. 20 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal in 40 minutes of play. If one stat stands out right now, Dean, it's the turnovers. Evansville's up to nine, and they certainly have to cut down on turnovers if they want to stay with the Musketeers. And that was a Chris Mack play. He got loose and hit the shot. Davenport again looking inside. That's a pretty good offense right there. Yeah, if you don't block him out, he'll do that. He's done it many times throughout his Xavier career. You saw Xavier let Sasha Hootman go down the floor that time before they came back and got him. Xavier, I wouldn't call him a Loyola Marymount type about no. giving up shots. Although they beat him. But they, yeah, they sure did. But they really want to force things. They really want to pressure you. They want to try to get you in an up-tempo game. And they are in the midst of a 10-2 run right now. Walker picking up the foul. And I think this is a situation where the Aces really could use a Larry Brand off the press because he can convert. Well, he hasn't been in yet, and uh, the way things look, it doesn't look like he will be. Jamal Walker making a silly foul out front hand checking first and then reaching in and committing the foul. As the Aces scroll down to the other end of the court, good free throw shooter on the line for UE. Treffler, 85% on the C MCC season. That's fourth in the conference. He had a string of over 20 in a row earlier this season. He's hit 32 of his last 36, making now 34 of his last 38. So and he's got five points. Chaka wanted to come up and go for a steal there. Strong with a good move, and they're going to call it on Schreffler. Gary Muncy with the call. Well, when he got Hill up in, or Brian Hill up in the air, that's when he made his drive inside. So that's when the play was lost as far as the aces are concerned. Jim Cruz with his head down on the bench saying, uh, what do we have to do to seal off that inside? You saw Mack was there. He was uh, trying to draw the charge. Derek Strong, a very strong individual. Pretty good free throw shooter, too. On the season, Derek Strong. What is he, Dean? 53 of 87. So, not too bad. 87%. We'll get it. Hill, out to Schreffler. Scott says, somebody cut and get open. He says, I'm open. And right down two for Scott Schreffler. Nice throw, eight point, seven points for Schreffler. And the aces are hanging around. They're only down by five. 29-24, Davenport from outside. And again, he draws a blank from out there. And again, Xavier kind of flat-footed underneath there. And Sasha Hootman rips the board. Hill outside to get uh, Tyrone Hill out there with him, keep him away from the boards. That might be part of that plan. Shreffler comes out and is his release. 
Chaka not bashful about it. Puts it up and they're talking it over, the officials. Mike Sands there, good piece of officiating there. Rip Hatfield wasn't sure, asked for help for Mike Sands there. Mike says, hey, that's purple ball. Of course, it's always a good call if you're yeah. an Aces fan. Pete Gillen didn't like it. He didn't think that was a good call, did he? Aces running the clock. Dreffler has it. Looking for Chandler. Chaka puts it up, and it's blocked by Strong. Oh, good play, play by Walker. Here play. comes Xavier. Walker pushing it up. He gets it. That was Xavier basketball. That last sequence right there, a block on one end, a drive to the hoop on the other. You are exactly right. Treffler. Brian Hill fakes it. Too far. That's out of his range. Dayton and St. Louis in a good one. Dayton with about two and a half minutes left, leading St. Louis 72-68. St. Louis trailing now. And Strong blocks it again. He comes up with it. Brian, don't pick up your third foul. That wouldn't have been a good one at all. Aces with their 10th turnover. This first half can't get over soon enough, I think, for the Aces, because it seems like uh, Xavier's trying to stretch the lead here. Take a look and see how Chris Mack committed that foul. Well, it's pretty hard to tell. They're going to give that to Chandler. And that'll be the third on Chaka. He may be coming out, and Shane Barrett's going to come in for him, it looks like. That gives the Aces a little better, a uh, little better ball handler in there, but might hurt them a little bit defensively. Chaka has been coming down, doing a nice job of doubling down on the uh, the defensive end. At halftime, we'll talk to Mike Sheridan of the Basketball Times, also Mark Tomasic, who used to be uh, assistant sports editor of the Evansville Press. He is now here in Cincinnati working at a newspaper. Well, Shreffler tried to hit a cutting Hopeman, and that ball went right by him. And that is 11 turnovers, and that is way too many for one half of basketball. Not the happy look of a birthday boy right there. Looking inside. Xavier continues to look inside. With all the big guys, why not? There's a mismatch. Gladden will finally pop it. Ooh, Tyrone almost picks up the foul. Brian says, Hill, get away from me. Another turnover for UE. Here comes Walker, and he just throws it right out of bounds and hits our camera guy. I hope he's okay down there. Sixth turnover for the Musketeers. Colin Parker, the uh, outside gunslinger. He will shoot from the outside. He's coming in, and Pete Gillen says, Jamal, you just have to slow down. Also into the ball game, Aaron Williams. Williams checks back in. 31-24, Aces trailing it by seven. They're under two minutes to play. They could score a couple right here. They'd be right where they want to be, really. Williams, another good athlete. Jim Cruz looks over at his bench and says, all we have to do is bounce pass, bounce pass. Gladden is on Schreffler, and another turnover. About the fourth or fifth bad pass forced in the middle. And a charging foul on Jamie Gladden and Shane Barrett. He went flying, and he's not, I think he got the wind knocked out of him, it looks like. He was a tough little customer. That is maybe, a, I don't know, the Aces may have gotten away with one because Barrett was moving. I think they may have got Gladden for shoving off as opposed to actually getting hit. And Milt, Milt Donald has checked in for Shane. Yeah, he got uh, banged up pretty good that time. 
I think the Aces are just looking for someone, Dan, who'll take care of the ball a little bit. And they can deliver it to Scott Schreffler. The Musketeers' press has been pretty relentless all first half. Parker to Davenport. Davenport puts it up. And coming out of there is Scott That's Schreffler. Right. Max says, let's hold it up here just a second. And Milt Donald will run the show now for the Aces. Chris Mack kind of floating on that jump shot a little bit, Dan. Just missed it. In and out. Good call. You've got to get to the baseline on that play, and Mark Jewell just about a step late. Well, it's been 31-24 for quite some time now. As we take a look, Jewell appeared to be moving to his right. And for Jewell, that'll be his first foul. There's a good look at Mark. He's back for his third game after the broken foot. He was missed nine games and uh, still working back into playing yeah, shape. Probably getting more playing time than he thought since Larry Brown Brand is out with the hamstring. And the score has been 31-24 for about the last three minutes since the 313 mark. But so much for that. Eight points for Michael Davenport, who'd been quiet for a long time. Davenport with eight. Davenport is a very good free throw shooter. He is an 83% free throw shooter coming in. Dwayne Wilson in the ball game. Hill gets a rest. He'll sit out the remainder of the first half. Dwayne's a big boy. He's a redshirt freshman, 6'8", 245 pounds. Davenport will try to give Xavier their biggest lead of the night and does. 33-24. Aces trailing it by nine. Wonder if they'll hold it for one. There's about a two-second difference with the shot clock and the game clock. And they nearly had a turnover. Chris Mack looked up and pointed with one finger. We don't know if that was play number one or one shot. It looks like the Aces would just as soon take one here. And I'm sure this guy would like to be the one that takes it. I think a three-pointer at the buzzer would be ideal right about now. I think the Aces would probably take that. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Two seconds difference on the game clock. Two, one, Jewel gets it off in time. And no shot is gonna count there. We are at halftime in the Cincinnati Gardens where a sellout crowd is seeing the Xavier Musketeers leading the University of Evansville Purple Aces by nine, 33-24. You know other banks make a lot of promises. At Old National, we make guarantees. Do you want direct access to a money mover specialist 24 hours a day? We guarantee it. How about bounce-proof checking? Guaranteed. The best deal in town on home equity rates. Guaranteed. You know, there's a big difference between a promise and a guarantee. To make a guarantee, you have to have the strongest bankers in town behind you. We do. Guaranteed. That's why Old National is your bank for life. This is Cockleburr. And this, this is Canopy. It's amazing what a little paint will do for a room or a piece of furniture. You know, I've learned a lot about fixing up the houses we bought over the years, and I'll tell you who taught me. Keisters. The folks at Keisters know what they're doing. Hardware, paint, lumber, you name it, they've got the answers. And Keisters stores are practically everywhere. Hey, I'm no expert handyman, but with Keisters handy, I don't have to be. Family Fest, this weekend at Eastland Mall from WFIE-TV Channel 14. 
Ever wonder what it's like behind the scenes at Newswatch? Well, you can find out Friday as we broadcast Newswatch at 5 live from Eastland Mall. Hey, come by. We'd like to meet you. And see how a TV newscast is really done. That's Friday at Eastland Mall. It's all part of WFIE's Family Fest. See you at Family Fest okay, this there. weekend at Eastland Mall from WFIE TV Channel 14. 33-24 at the half, Zapier leading it, and there's no uh, question, turnovers is definitely the reason right now. Definitely, the Aces definitely have to cut back on turnovers. They have something like seven or eight right now. But on the plus side, I think the Aces have got to be happy. They're down by nine, which, of course, they'd like to be closer. But the tempo, I think, pretty much has been dictated by the Aces. They let Xavier run a couple of times toward the end of the first half, but the Aces really are in a pretty decent position, all things considered right now. Uh, Xavier not able to hit the outside shot. That had to have been a key to, for the Aces to even stick around for a while. They had, they've been letting some of their guys wide open for shots they've missed a few. Plus, they've missed a couple of cripples down low, real close shots they've missed. So that's good news for UE. I guess the answer for the Aces is take care of the basketball in the second half. Yeah, they, that, that'll be something Jim Cruz will obviously stress in the locker room, cut down on the turnovers. They forced a lot of passes inside, which were slapped away. Chaka Chandler threw a couple in there. Shane Barrett threw one in there. So they've got to definitely cut back on the turnovers to come out of here with a win, which will be tough enough as it is. <laughs> uh, we have made mention that the uh, Xavier Musketeers are ranked in almost every poll. And of course, that brings out a lot of writers who come in and talk to these guys. And Mike Sheridan of the Basketball Times is with us. And he is uh, in, of course, doing a story on Xavier. And uh, Mike, uh, what, what are your impressions of Xavier? You're here doing a story on them. They look pretty good the first half. Yeah, they played at a nice tempo. They were able to dictate what they wanted to do more so than getting into Evansville styles of play. And they got it up and down the floor, which is what they want. How many games do you get to see during the course of uh, the season? About 50 or 60, I would say, in different spots around the country. And you get to see a lot of MCC play, don't you? Yeah, I do. We're based in Detroit, so that gives me a chance to see a lot of MCC stuff and then occasionally trips like this as well. I did. Is this the first time you've seen Evansville? Yes, it is the first time for both Evansville and Xavier tonight. What are your impressions of the Aces playing without Godfrey? Well, they're doing a nice job. They're well coached and they, they get into their system and they've got the three-point shooters where you if you let them go into that system, they'll beat you. You've got a pretty good pulse on college basketball. Uh, name a Final Four for you. Who do you think some of the teams are right now that have a legitimate shot of winning the whole thing? Capable of winning so many games in a row. I think Duke is a team that can do it. They've got a nice, solid balance, and they always get better towards the end of the season. I think Syracuse, with Michael Edwards at the point guard, is a team that can get there. Georgetown, you certainly have to consider as well. I think someone out of the Big Ten will get there. Uh, I don't know, maybe Michigan or uh, Illinois. Whoever can survive. Yeah, basically. And Illinois has got a nice team, too. So it, it, there's any number of teams. Even a team like Minnesota could get there, too. And UNLV is a team you got to look at also. Are you doing a story just on Tyrone Hill, the Twin Towers, or just Xavier? Uh, primarily Xavier. Obviously, Tyrone and Derek are a big part of that. But primarily Xavier and the, the way They've been able to stay in the top 20 and keep the program in the national scene somewhat, whereas a lot of times when you beat a Missouri, as they did a couple of years ago, you'll see a team fade like a Siena and go back to where they were before. Pete Gillen and these guys have been able to keep it up, and that's impressive. What are your impressions of the conference? Uh, it's getting better. I think Dayton and Marquette have helped immensely. Uh, Kevin O'Neill's bringing in a lot of talented guys for next year for Marquette. They'll be very tough. Dayton is getting better. I think that style of play with the Jim O'Brien has brought in is very conducive to uh, exciting basketball. And I think they'll, uh, I think both of those add a lot. And teams like Detroit will come on, and you've got the established powers like Xavier and St. Right. Louis and Evansville. Mike, thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure Thank to see you. you. And I'm sure we'll see you down the road thanks again. Very much. It's a nine-point advantage right now for Xavier, 33-24. When we come back, we'll have another special guest that I'm sure you'll remember, Mark Tomasi. He's now here in Cincinnati, used to be with an Evansville newspaper, and we'll talk to him and have some more second-half activities, or more halftime activities, and the tip-off the second half when we come back. When you started driving, you pretended your car was real. Now you wish a real car gave you as little trouble as that old soapbox. Unical can't promise that, but we can offer an unleaded gasoline that can give you a smoother ride, our unleaded premium. Fill her up. Sure, Murph, give us the best you got. And check the oil, too. Will that be cash or credit, gentlemen? <laughs> Right. But I think 
the service that we got was fantastic. They don't have a stereotype idea that a woman is a dumbbell when it comes to hammer and nail. I've bought a lot of stuff of cotton. Have you? Oh, yes, indeed. I certainly have. The program no one can match just got better because you made January one of our most successful sales months ever. We're extending the guaranteed rebates. Get up to $1,500 on our sporty Daytonas, 1000 back on Spirit, and 1000 on Dodge Shadow. Nobody can match us. Not Ford, not Chevy, not the imports. Only Dodge. Who's your millionaire? Saturday nights at 6.30, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. Back in the Cincinnati Gardens with me now is a guy very familiar to Evansville people, especially if you took the Evansville Press a few years ago. Mark Tomasic now working as a sports editor here for Cincinnati. Uh, Got to be uh, fun to see the Aces again after all those years of covering them. It's a lot of fun, Dean. I've been following them since I left Evansville, and the job that Jim Cruz has done has been outstanding. We were talking before. You had the first sit-down interview, the first one-on-one -on -one with Jim Cruz after he got the job. What was that like? I was so impressed with him right then. He was all business, very bright. You could tell he had a plan and that he would execute it. And I'm not surprised by the success he's had at Evansville. What are your impressions of the league? You get to see the, the best team in the league play uh, occasionally here in Xavier. Uh, what are your impressions overall of it? I think it's an excellent league, Dean. By bringing in Dayton and Marquette, the rise in St. Louis's program and Xavier's program, I was there when the league first started, and they had Oklahoma City, uh, Oral Roberts. They were handing out the trophies to the 82 aces out of a garbage bag. Uh, this league has grown by leaps and bounds. I'm really glad to see it, and I'm glad to see the aces be a big part of it. What do you miss most about Evansville? Put you on the spot here. Well, I miss the, uh, the hominess, the friendly people, a uh, great community, uh, some of the best times I've had there, and, and much of the success I've had here is direct a result of my days in Evansville. You made a quick stop through Hollywood, Florida. You're in Cincinnati now. You got here about the time the Pete Rose situation got hot? I sure did. I came aboard. Pete got in trouble. I, I think people said, well, oh, my God, there has to be a connection there. Really, it was, it was very sad to see, um, but it really had the town uh, shaken up. The Reds, uh, you know, we have a lot of Reds fans in Evansville. What are your impressions? What's going to happen with the Reds? You know, we, we've heard, well, it's only going to get worse before it gets better in Cincinnati. Is that true? I think Lou Pinello was a great hire by the Reds. A lot of respect for him. I think he's, he's going to come in with a real plan to make things happen. They're lacking in left field. They, uh, they have a young catcher, Joe Oliver, and how he does is a big question mark now. And, of course, can Rob Dibble and, and Randy Myers together make up for John Franco? Those are the key questions. You uh, in with the major leagues here in a major league town. What's the impressions of no baseball for a while? If well, that's the case. Well, people are worried about that. I, I just don't see, Dean, how they can let this thing drag on. There's way too much money at stake. I'd be very surprised if it goes on for more than a few more days, really. Do you think the, uh, the league will, or the owners will give in a little, or the players, or will take both sides? I think the owners will give in. Uh, they have so much money at stake with the TV contract, <laughs> especially. I don't see how they can afford to have a reg not, not have the regular season with the contracts they're paying. But people here are worried. Baseball means everything to Cincinnati. It is, it is still the number one sport here. Many people from here go down to spring training, and, and it's messing up their plans. Mark, we uh, wish you all the best, and thanks for stopping by and visiting with us. All right. That's Mark Tomasic. He is the sports editor of the Cincinnati uh, Post here in Cincinnati. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at the MCC leaders in uh, scoring and rebounding and assists and have some stats for you from the first half. Right now, Xavier leading it on the scoreboard, 33-24. to 24. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. By Keister's, your hardware store and more. By Deaconess Hospital, the right decision. By Unical. And by WFIE-TV.
At Old National, we don't make promises, we make guarantees. The best mortgage options around, guaranteed. Just ask us. Branches where managers make their own decisions, guaranteed. Moneymaker CDs with superior rates and absolute safety, guaranteed. Credit cards with guaranteed convenience, right here. It's people like these who make it easy for us to provide guaranteed banking. That's why Old National is your bank for life. Over $1,500,000 in escort rebates in this area alone. That makes this the biggest Ford Escort sellout ever. We've got over 1,500 new escorts in stock. And all come with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 financing plus a 750 rebate. Get a four-door with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 plus a 750 rebate. Same goes for a wagon, even an Escort GT. Choose the $1,000 rebate and get an Escort Pony for just $67.57. But it all ends soon, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. What could a little more atrazine hurt? Extrazine 2 corn herbicide for a third less atrazine than bicep or lariat. If you have been injured in an accident, which is clearly the fault of another, do you need to consult with an attorney? Perhaps not if you know the full extent of the law as it relates to damages. Medical bills incurred or anticipated, impaired earning ability, Loss of income now or anticipated later. Pain and suffering, loss of spousal consortium. If you are not familiar with these terms, call us at Robert John and Associates. Robert John and Associates, 425-2718. We are back in Cincinnati, a sold out Cincinnati Gardens. The Aces trailing Xavier right now, 33-24. One other game we can pass along to you, Dayton leading St. Louis with a couple of minutes left in that game, 72 to 68. There are very good players on the floor here, very good players up in Dayton. And uh, let's take a look at the league leaders. First of all, starting in scoring. Well, leading the conference in scoring from Loyola is Keith Gales with 26 points a game. Marquette, Tony Smith with 22 points a game. Then comes Tyrone Hill, one of four Musketeers in the top 15 in scoring with 20 points a game. Miguel Knight of Dayton with 20 points a game. St. Louis's Anthony Bonner with 17.7 points a game. And then comes Brian Hill in the eighth spot. And he's averaging 15.8. Jamal Walker of Xavier, 15 even. Michael Davenport of Xavier, 14 even. And uh, tied for 12, Derek Strong from Xavier, 14 even. He's tied with Kevin Foots of St. Louis. Checking, checking out the rebounders, Anthony Bonner of St. Louis, 13.3 per game. Tyrone Hill, a little under Anthony Bonner with 13.1. Derek Strong, the other half of the Twin Tower, 10.5. Keir Rogers of Loyola with 8.7. Anthony Corbett of Dayton, 8.7, and Chris Mack of the Aces down in seventh place with 6.7 rebounds a game. Moving over to the assist, Tony Smith of Marquette with 6.7 to lead the conference. Miguel Knight, six assists per game. Charles Newberry of St. Louis, 5.9. Scott Treffler of the Aces, 5.8 a game. Jamal Walker of Xavier, 5.6. And then a couple of aces in eighth and ninth. Chris Mack with 3.6 and Chaka Chandler of the aces. 3.5 assists per game. Let's take a look now at the first half stats uh, for the Evansville Purple Aces. They are shooting 50% on 10 of 20 from the field and 50% from the three-point line, one of two. They are also 50% from the th free throw stripes, three of six. They've had 14 rebounds, but here's the one glaring stat which I kind of underestimated at the top of the halftime show. They have 14 turnovers, and they'll definitely have to cut that down if they hope to get back into this one. As far as individual scoring, Chris Mack leads the way with nine. Of course, he had the big game at Roberts against the Musketeers. Scott Treffler was seven. Brian Hill was six, and he also leads with five rebounds. And Sasha Hoopman with a deuce. UE has never led in this one. It's been tied five times. As far as the Musketeers are concerned, they are shooting 43% on 12 of 28. They've only made 17% of their threes, one of six. They're doing fairly well at the charity stripe, eight of 11. They've out-rebounded the Aces, 11. I'm sorry, the Aces have out-rebounded. Uh, there's another glaring stat. They've out-rebounded the Aces, 14 to 11. They've uh, committed half as many turnovers as UE. 
14 to seven for Xavier. As far as the individual scoring is concerned, Michael Davenport has seven points. Tyrone Hill with eight, four of four shooting, and he has seven rebounds. Jamal Walker with six, Jamie Gladden with six, Derek Strong has three points, and Maurice Brantley with one point in this contest. And let's pass along Dean while we've got it here. The Lady Aces score, they played just before this one. This one went into overtime. It was a pretty exciting ball game, but unfortunately the Aces came out on the losing end, 81-79 to the Lady Musketeers. They had a uh, they had a chance to get a couple of buck or a couple of shots at the bucket at the end, but didn't do it. Let's take a look at the games coming up on Saturday. Of course, Evansville will be at Dayton, and we'll bring you that action. That is an afternoon game. And then there's the big one, St. Louis at Xavier. That'll be a good one. Marquette and Loyola and Butler is at Detroit. And we can give you a final now. Uh, the Aces will be playing in Dayton, playing for second place, trying to get second place all by themselves because St. Louis tonight has lost at Dayton. Dayton in overtime has come back and beat St. Louis 84 to 81. Dayton trailed by five at the half, came back, tied it up, and sent it into overtime and beat the Billikens by three, 84-81. So St. Louis drops to seven and three. An Aces win here would put them seven and three and tied for second place. And Dayton now moves to six and four. Be a nice bottleneck in the conference. Be a good race down to the wire. But the Aces have some work to do if they want to get back in that hunt and stay in the hunt. This is really a big game for them. But again, we talked about uh, Xavier's dominance here on this floor. 27 straight, 106 and eight over the last some odd 10, 12 years or so. So they have really been dominant. One of the key points in that first half, Dean, was the Musketeers' eight-point run, which basically is the difference in this one. It happened midway or near the end of the first half. Here we go with the second half. The Aces have it, looking to take care of the ball better this half. And a great play by Sasha Hootman. Good hustle. Sasha with a couple of points and a couple of rebounds in that first half. Shaka missed a couple of short-range jumpers in the first half, and he misses another one here in the second. You get into a jumping match down there for the rebound with Tyrone Hill, you're going to lose. That's right. Chaka now 0 for 4 from the floor. A couple of easy shots for the Aces. They missed. Derek Strong goes up and hits it. And Strong has his fifth point. Well, it could have been a seven-point game now to 11. That's a major turnaround to start the second half. Hopefully the Aces can pull Matt. off a little bit of a run, but not with another turnover. Matt gets it right to Derek Strong. And you always want to come out and start the second half and get the tempo set your way. And Strong just oh. takes it right away from Hoopman, and it comes out and... Went off of Strong, I believe, out of bounds. Off of Strong, you're exactly right, and... Hoopman says, holy cow, that guy's big. Here comes the Aces, and here comes Chris Mack. The Aces, as you said, at halftime, Dan, have committed way too many turnovers. 15 now for the game. Scott Schreffler, the Aces need to get that gun shooting a little bit. You got to believe he's going to be taking some more shots. And an air ball by Chaka Chandler. Aces, Aces coaching staff claiming a foul there, but it didn't look like it to me. Chandler just came up way short. Now the crowd's on him. Two coaches jumped up. They saw something. Second half, bad omen for the Aces. They've committed a turnover. Good hustle by Chandler that time. They've committed a turnover, Dean, and they've missed two easy shots. Hopefully they got it out of their system. Chaka Chandler playing the point there on that 2-3 zone. He has three personal fouls. And a bucket inside. Great shot by Davenport. Michael got open. And we're up to 13 points now, and the Aces had better cut into the lead or it could be all over. And again, an Aces turnover. And that's going to be Xavier Ball. And Jim Cruz says, I think we better talk things over. So, just uh, 
two and a half minutes into the second half, and already Xavier is taking control. It is 37-24. You want a big piece of chicken, try this little Bye, test. Fingers. Take that chicken by the hand and see which is best. Nuggets take two fingers, chicken strips three. But for Long John Silver's chicken plank, get you to leave. You gotta have five fingers. Five fingers. For Long John Silver's chicken boneless or white planks, you gotta have five fingers. Long John Silver's delicious chicken planks, the five finger food. This fantasy is brought to you by Unical. Since 1951, we fueled more NASCAR winners than all other brands combined. And we put that same winning spirit into gasolines for your car. And that was a fine piece of driving. Oh, but nothing. What's that, Murph? Nothing, not, nothing, Ed. There's nothing. The Aces trailed it by nine at the half. Uh, four points by Xavier has increased the lead to 13, 37 to 24. And the big reason for that, the Aces committed two more turnovers to open up the second half, and they're also 0 of 3 shooting. Now 10 of 23 for the game, while the Musketeers are 2 of 4 and 14 of 32 for the game. They've committed eight turnovers. So the Aces twice as many turnovers, and that's not going to get the job done if that trend continues. Well, I think the Muskies definitely have uh, the tempo going their way right now. Now, here's that great move by Davenport. He finds an opening inside. He just takes advantage of it, and he kind of scooped the ball in and made a nice play out of it. That's uh, play of the day material right there. Nine points for Davenport, who really started out hot in this one, cooled off in the first half, but starts uh, off hot here in the second half. You don't realize how good a shot that is until you stand yeah. next to Brian Hill and watch him jump. He's 6'7 and can leap over the rim. Xavier seems to be a lot more confident here early in the second half. Tyrone Hill has been fairly quiet and breaks his silence with his 10th point of the night. Got off the floor in a big hurry that time, and the Aces are getting to be in a trouble some situation down now 15. I don't think there's any question that Tyrone Hill is an NBA player. Oh, he'll be a what top 10 15 pick maybe. And the Aces lose it again in the backcourt on the uh, change of possession and Jim Cruz can just scratch his head and wonder what has happened. It is a 15 point lead now. And there, Sasha, or uh, Chaka Chandler said, hey, darn it, almost had it. And a foul. And they're going to call that on Chaka Chandler, and that's going to be foul number four. First team foul in the Aces who have yet to score here in the second half. Jim Cruz will remain with Chaka on the floor. Gladden penetrates and dishes it back. Walker with his first three-pointer attempt. Hill got away with a definite push-off inside. He's so dominant, though. It's, he's it's so, amazing to watch. He's so big, all he has to do is move his arm, and he's pushing off. Last couple of shots, long rebound. Xavier's been able to track it down because the Aces have packed it so tightly inside. Brian Hill looks over at uh, Scott Schreff and says, hey, Schreff, we need to get some points on the board. Second team foul for UE. And Tyrone Hill puts an uh, exclamation point on that trip down the floor. With authority. says, I can match that, and it's now 19, 43-24. The Aces have gone three and a half minutes without scoring. Brian Hill, a senior, brings it across, says, let's not get too excited. Crowd's into it now. Aces trying to slow it down, get a shot. They need, they need a bucket right now. Ryan from the baseline, and he connects. Well, the uh, 
the Musketeers were on a 10-0 run. That's the Aces' first points of the second half, and it came uh, about four minutes in. It's four minutes and 10 seconds to deliver the first blow. Strong working on Mack, and Hill working on Hoopman, puts it up a little short, and Chandler gets the loose ball. Well, there's plenty of time, but the Aces just have to make sure they hit all their open shots. And take care of the basketball. That has been the main problem with the Aces tonight. Turnovers. Mack from the baseline. Too hard, and Tyrone Hill, surprise, surprise, with the rebound. Here comes Walker. He wants to push it, and that's a charging foul. Tyrone Hill has 10 rebounds in this one so far. Jamal puts his head down and commits the third personal. And Mark Jewell will check in for Sasha Hootman. Well, Tyrone is a lot quicker, obviously, than Sasha. And uh, Sasha really wasn't getting the job done so far early, so maybe Jewell will be a positive replacement. Derek Strong checks out of the lineup, and back in is Aaron Williams. He only played two minutes against U of E in the first game, but he's seeing much more time this time around. And Chandler had Mack open as he was cutting to the bucket, but didn't see him. He sees him this time, and... Nice cut. Nice cut by Mack that time, who scored his 11th point. It seems, though, that the uh, Musketeers press is starting to fluster the Aces with every trip down the floor. Ace is coming back a bit now. Shot inside, no good, and Brian Hill comes away with it. Big trick for the Aces now with a bucket. They would get over the 30-point mark. It's a 15-point advantage for Xavier. Aces certainly not out of it by any stretch of the imagination, not with the, uh, not with Treffler in there who can Got that time, cutting to the bucket. Jewel, nice pass inside. And Treffler had his man beat. Mark does a lot of positive things on the floor. A lot of people think uh, he was going to step in and score 20 points a game, but he's doing some things the Aces like. Right now, the Aces trailing at 43-28. We have 4-12 left. Back in a minute. Get total control of your business finances on demand up-to-the-minute accounts of your transactions in an instant. Introducing InTouch Cash Manager from Old National Bank, the area's first direct access business banking system. All you need is a PC, InTouch software, and a business. Your bank is now open. For more information about InTouch, see your Old National Banker at your Bank for Life. You know what drives me nuts about the tri-state area? It's not the weather, it's not the traffic, it's the radio stations. Check it out. Oh, I'm supposed to make a choice here. There is one radio station that plays the best of classic rock. The old and the new. Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Who. Like this. It's still fun to rock and roll. 94.9 WRBT. There's 14 minutes and 12 seconds left in the game, and the Aces trailing it on the scoreboard Don't right now. Don't shortchange the Aces. They need that time. This is a nice jam here by Derek Strong for two of his seven points in this one. And the he, Ace, he look, runs the floor so well. They're slamming and jamming. He just turned 22 last Friday, and uh, he would probably like to get 22 points. It's birthday time around here. Jim Cruz having a very unpleasant birthday so far. He probably wasn't real happy when he saw the schedule and saw he was going to be spending his birthday in Cincinnati playing Xavier. Somehow I think his birthday is the least of his uh, worries right now. This uh, second half, Dean, has been a big 10-4. Xavier scored the first 10 points. Evansville, the last four. Nice trend for UE. Hopefully they can score a few more here. Do you think there's any good buddies out there? on the Brian Hill inside. This could be, oh, just puts it up very gingerly off the glass. Got them off their feet, and that's where he shoots the best from inside. Aces back within 13. Ten points for Hill. Brian Hill. And the sellout crowd now starting to 
voiced their disapproval of this Aces comeback. This is Walker, and he nails it. It's a two-pointer, two pushes the lead back to 15. Eight points for Jamal Walker, and once again, the full-court press. Treffler breaks it, Mack has it. Off his, what a great play. Outstanding play by Chris Mack. Great hustle. Ball bounced off his head. <laughs> He's a scrapper. Inside to Mark Jewell, and he took a travel. Oh, and now they're going to say a foul on Aaron Williams. Well, I think we may have gotten away with one there because it definitely looked like Hill or Jewell picked up his feet. Well, let's take another look and see what happened. We picked it. We picked the play up a little late. But yeah. That, but he uh, got Williams off his feet, picks up his third foul. You know what happened first there foul. is Aaron Williams pushed him because that's what the official said. Well, that'll usually get you nailed. <laughs> <laughs> that's a no-no. Uh-oh. Mack hits the deck again. Mark Jewell tipping it over Tyrone Hill, and Jewell says, I do not no. like these odds. He One on three. Go, didn't want to go into the trees that time. Well, Jewell's a smart student. So he's no dummy. Aces are pretty good about knowing their limitations. Tyrone Hill with uh, <clears throat> another rebound. Got to hit those ju jump shots. Got to hit those. Walker again, and Jewel with the board. So Mark battling inside right now, doing pretty well against Tyrone Hill. They really are staying with him on the boards. It's the turnovers that are killing. When the second half, it's the uh, missed open shot. You're exactly right. Treffler backs up and jacks it up there. Now he doesn't usually miss those. And again, where were the purple shirts underneath the back, underneath the basket? Near still by Hill. Tyrone out to Davenport, and Pete Gillen says, let's run play number six and see what that brings. This is Brantley, and he throws it away. Here comes Chaka. Chaka and Brian Hill, and... Nice um, play. Another easy bucket for Brian Hill. Chaka gave the ball, delivered the ball at the right time to Hill for the easy layup. Pete Gillen said, I want some time run off the clock. There's Derek Strong, waits to re-enter the game. Huey slowly creeping back in. Walker decides not to pull the trigger this time, but Davenport will. And Brian Hill goes over the back was just, and commits the foul. He was just out of position. Jamal Walker got inside of him that time. And Jamal's a pretty good offensive rebounder. Kind of snuck inside. Third foul on Hill and the third on the Aces in the second half. This is Brantley. He's not going to take those shots out there. He'll take that shot, though. Probably an ill-advised shot. Brantley shooting just 41%. He's 0 for 6 from three-point range is why I said he is not going to take an outside shot. Treffler directing Brian Hill down. And now he drives and gets it out to Mark Jewell. Jewell will not take that shot this time, and he throws it away. Davenport travels. Nope, going to call a foul on Jewell. Well, the ace is trying to dictate the offense there, dictate the pace, and once again, the turnover. Fourth foul on the ace's second on Mark Jewell. Mark says, yeah, did I get him? He's just getting beat to the hole. We are approaching the halfway point of the second half. The ace is trailing at 45 to 32. Pete Gillen said, come on, we've got to get that uh, lead back up there. 19 turnovers for the aces to 11 for Xavier. It's a huge difference, uh, and that's why the score is rather lopsided at this point. Pete Gillen is selecting to go with uh, just one of his big guys right now and Derek Strong, although Williams is in there at 6'9". This is Gladden. Blocked from behind, but a foul from behind. I think Jewel may have picked up his fourth. 
Chris Mack go? Yeah, it was close, but the call doesn't go his way. And Jamie Gladden, who is a 76% free throw shooter, he will step to the line for free throws. He's a first team all stater. And he, in high school, he scored in double figures in his final 50 high school games. So this guy knows how to shoot, although he hasn't done a lot of shooting tonight. And Dave Miner, the transfer from Indiana University, checks in, seeing his first action tonight. And Michael Davenport will check out. Miner has really gone into seclusion for this team. He really played a lot last year, but his uh, production and minutes played really down this year. That was the first trip to the free throw line for either team in the second half. Gladden connected on both. Chandler bringing it back, and he'll pop the three. No good and no rebounding. Wide open. The Aces are worried about getting back on defense and uh, not doing any kind of offensive rebounding. That's why it's so important for them to hit their shots. And Chaka Chandler has just fouled out. Mark it down at the 10.02 mark. Chandler fouls out. Well, they didn't get the kind of night out of Chaka that they really needed. Or at least, uh, I'm not saying they're out of the game yet, but they really needed more production. He didn't even score. Or at least he didn't in the first half. And uh, he was 0 of 7 shooting. So along with his not so good performance in this one and the aces turnovers the combination is not a good one milt donald into the lineup replacing chaka this has been a rather precarious day for not only the aces but for us we had a little tough time getting here today but we're here <laughs> williams on the baseline well, just as the Aces were getting back into it, Xavier's taking control again, and they've scored the last few points in a row. The Aces, if they're going to make a run here, need to make it now. They look for Schreffler. And one of their outside guns is gone, and Chandler and Strong just shoved Brian Hill from behind. The Aces got lucky. And Donald finally comes up with the ball, and there's a foul called on Brantley. His second, team's fourth. Donald loses the ball after Brantley comes up from behind. Sasha back in. Mark Jewell goes out. We haven't seen Larry Brand tonight. He was scheduled, uh, penciled in as a starter, but he raced when he came up with a bad hamstring. He injured it on Monday. And there must be a slick spot out there. That's uh, two or three times we've seen players go down over there. Chris Mack went down, and Brantley kind of looked at Donald and laughed and said, it's slippery over there. Williams is all over. Hoopman's back. Well, that was a pretty good foul, really, because if he hadn't have gotten in his way, it was in, they were going down for a jam. So at least it stopped the crowd's momentum and the team's momentum a little bit. There is Williams going over uh, Sasha's back. There it is again. <laughs> Sasha's going, where's this guy coming from? And then a foul, as you said, on Schreffler down. It'll down be a one and one. The official's talking it over. While we uh, clean up a little perspiration on the other side of the floor here. It is 49-32, Aces trailing at 9-17, or 9-12 left. And Brantley connects on the free throw. 18-point lead now for the Musketeers. This would be a good time for a run. Brantley misses, and Miner comes up with the rebound. Miner back to Brantley. So some new faces for Xavier as they try to rest some of their regulars as they will play St. Louis on Saturday, and Miner loses it inside. Sasha on the floor, we have a jump ball, and that'll be Ace's ball. Good hustle by Sasha. He's not afraid to get on the floor. It's a long way to come down, 
but uh, he showed some good hustle there and battling for the ball. The Aces will try to solve that pressure again. They've been doing a pretty decent job, at least in the second half. But once they get down into their half-court offense, they've been coming up short. Brian Hill off the front of the rim. We have a uh, another college final to pass along to you. Kentucky has upset LSU tonight, 100 to 95. Well, they played a rough arena. But <laughs> what are you trying to say, Dan? Well, you know, at home, Kentucky's tough. Oh, okay. Even if they are having a, you know, a down year, and LSU, though, a ranked team, so I guess you'd have to consider it an upset. A big win for the Cats. A lot of people say uh, Rick Pitino doesn't have any talent down there. Bunk, he's got some pretty good players down there. We didn't hear about their uh, confrontation, Pitino and Dale Brown, at the beginning of the game. They had one in the first meeting. We don't know what happened at this time. The Aces here, trailing it on the scoreboard, trying to make a comeback here. And Scott Treffler says, move down, Milt, and I'll give you the ball, and he did. Donald running the show out front with Brantley on him. Good defense by Xavier. Brian Hill with a short little baseline jumper and gives Scott Treffler a yeah, great assist great on that. Great job by Treffler. Got Xavier in the air and dished it off for the easy shot. That's our first bucket in a while. 14 points for Brian Hill, and that's a travel on Dave Miner. Well, Miner, who likes to play the piano and sing, probably singing the blues right now after that call. <laughs> Tyrone Hill coming back in. Right now, the Aces trailing it by the score of 50-34. We have 7.56 left to go in the game. We'll be back in a minute. Kings Electronics and Appliances is proud to announce the grand opening of their newest location in Lawrenceville, Illinois. Now Kings gives you the buying power of a national chain and locally owned store. Save big on a Magnavox 25-inch color console TV, only $3.96. Choose from a huge selection of camcorders from only $6.97. All big screen TVs, grand opening price. Low down payments, easy terms, and grand opening savings. Chain store prices with a hometown advantage. That's why nobody, nobody beats Kings King. Deal. Over $1,500,000 in escort rebates in this area alone. That makes this the biggest Ford Escort sellout ever. We've got over 1,500 new escorts in stock. And all come with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 financing plus a 750 rebate. Get a four-door with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 plus a 750 rebate. Same goes for a wagon, even an Escort GT. Choose the $1,000 rebate and get an Escort Pony for just $67.57. But it all ends soon, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. When you were a kid, you wanted your bike to sound like a car. Nowadays, you'd like your car to be as quiet as that old bike. So use a gasoline that can do a better job quieting knocks, one that's two octane higher than regular unleaded. Unical's 89 octane. Hey, Jimmy. Hi, Murph. It's the great game last night. Gee, thanks. We listened in to Pete Gillen during that timeout, and he said, we've got to play defense. This is the break earlier when uh, Hill got the ball inside. Aces in the second half, after scorching the Nets pretty much in the first half, and really their shooting percentage has taken a nosedive. They're down to 38% on five of 13. Donald gets it across the mat. Aces will probably have to start taking their shots a little quicker than they would like as Scott Schreffler on the bench. Chris Mack from outside, and again, the Aces have no rebounding underneath, and again, missing the wide open shot. A lot of in and outs, though. They have been very close. We have to look over at the Aces bench and wonder what would have happened had Larry Brand been able to play. Of course, he was very instrumental in that win in the stadium. Dave Miner oh, misfires, and there's Derek Strong. There's Tyrone Hill. They're calling uh, Tyrone for the foul, right? Or is it Brian Hill? It is 42, and it is Hill, but I think they're going to give it to Brian. 
kind of confusing. You got two hills and 242. That's right. You know, we look at the Aces bench and we wonder about Larry Brand. You know, what if uh, Dan Godfrey would have been around yeah. for the whole season? And a lot of one, a lot of what ifs on the Aces part this year. Plus their depth, of course, we know how depleted they are, and uh, that'll catch up with you. You know, I mean, the whole Aces snowball effect started so early back when they didn't get Lennox Forrester transferred in, didn't have enough hours, to, uh, transferable hours, had enough to graduate from the junior college, but it almost started all the way back then. And then, then of course, Reed Crafton, Jeff Morning, and the injuries came. It has been a frustrating season for the Aces. It is 52-34 now. A sellout crowd here to see their 22nd ranked Xavier Musketeers. It depends on what poll you look at. They're 21, 22, they're 19 in the UPI poll. They're good. And that was a nice move there by Chris Mack. He's got 13 points now. Tyrone Hill leading the way for uh, Xavier. Shane Barrett, Shane Barrett, number 12 is back in and this is Davenport from way outside and again the long rebound goes and a great play by Barrett Good and hustle. traveling on Hill. Great hustle by Shane Barrett. He made that play right there. Well, you know you could put Shane Barrett out there and he'd never get tired. Those soccer players, the way they train. Here comes Shane Barrett. And Shane says, give me that ball. ball. You know, it's a wonder Shane doesn't want to try to kick it out of their hands sometimes. Yeah. And there is a guy who probably frustrated enough to kick a chair right now. Tyrone Hill right on course like he's been all season. 14 points, 13 rebounds. Season averages. It's got to be so frustrating for those guys, Dan, because they work so hard and prepare the team so well. And then to have the things go wrong that have gone wrong this year. Well, Xavier's an exceptional team. Good hustle again by Shane Barrett. Strong, a little slow to get up. Derek has played a much better game tonight than he did at the stadium the first time around. Aces get it into Barrett against Jamal Walker. Here comes the double team with Davenport. And Shane gets it across to Milt Donald. Here's Brian Hill with the free throw line jumper and Hoopman almost got it over the back right there. But at least he was in there rebounding this time. It's the first time we've seen an Aces player in the offensive rebounding position, I think, the whole second half. There is that good double team. You give up the inside. You give up something on the outside. And Michael Davenport drove past his defensive man and hit the little bank shot. It's wide open on the weak side after they converged on Tyrone Hill. Another turnover. A long baseball pass down to Gladden, and Hills. They're going to count the bucket. And Brian Hill, I believe that's his fifth foul. I think they'll just count the bucket and count and have no foul. Oh, no foul. So that would be the Xavier's biggest lead of the night now at 20 points, 56 to 36. He takes it inside Hill. It just. They got him for going onto the backboard there. Strong commits the foul. The uh, fans wanted traveling. Mike Sanzier said, no, Derek pushed him first. Still waiting to see if Shane Bear is going to take a shot. Took one Saturday at Butler against Butler. I think he leads the conference in open shots not taken. Well, that's not his role on this team. No. Strong almost picked up another foul. Ace is trying to get it into Brian. Mack looks inside. He has been quiet for a while. And he is pushed. And so now the one and one goes into effect, and this game could start getting a little longer. Yes, and the things that we talked about, the Aces could not afford to have happen tonight are happening in a major way. Turnovers. It's been up about 19 or so now. And they're not shooting well. They've sure. really gone ice cold here in the second half. That is just the sixth team foul. I thought that was number seven. Mack gets hammered by Davenport. Oh. 
So Davenport called for the foul. That is his third. So Chris Mack will go back to the free throw line. He was one for two there in the first half. UE scored but 12 points in the second half. They had 24 at the end of the first half. And 36 is all they have right now. Chris Eyes flies and hits the free throw. That was their first free throw opportunity here in the second half. 68% free throw shooter. Hits his second one of the night. And he connects on both this time. And he's got 15. So Chris is having a good scoring night. Glad to see the Evansville cheerleaders and a few Aces fans over here tonight. But if you couldn't make the trip, we're glad you joined us here on WFIE. Davenport from way outside hits the three-pointer. That's their biggest lead, Dean. That's 21 points. 14 for Davenport. Donald sets up shop, gets it to Mack, and tried to get it to Mack, and Davenport got in there. And Jim Cruz, it doesn't matter whether they're ahead by 20, uh, behind by 20, side score, he's always up, always coaching, always teaching. Barrett had a shot. Hill inside to Sasha. Sasha stays with it. Davenport throws it back in. And Brian, this could be fun. And Brian Hill says, there's a little of my frustration I'm taking out on the basket. Well, Mack and Brian Hill have had good games. Hill with his 16th point, but haven't had help from the perimeter. And that's what happened the first time these two teams played. As the Aces' front line, first time they played, scored 52 of 59 points. And right now, Xavier has 59. That's as many as the Aces scored at Roberts to beat them. Tyrone gets his 15th point of the night. We want to remind you this broadcast of University of Evansville basketball is an exclusive telecast of WFIE-TV and may not be rebroadcast in whole or in part without the prior written consent of WFIE-TV Incorporated. Tyrone Hill, another double-double. He's been doing that his entire career here. 14 points to make that 15 now and 14 boards. And Tyrone gets it again. Still below his average, but there's still four minutes left. And a lot of the sellout crowd tonight now heads for the exits. They think the Musketeers have this one in hand. And indeed, they probably do, 61 to 40. Nine o'clock, L.A. Law. For all you L.A. Law fans, Mike Blake wasn't able to join us tonight. He's back doing News Watch, and you will see Mike along with David James and Kirk Clyde coming up at 10 o'clock. You can also join Mike Sunday at 11.30 for the sectional pairing show on WFIE. That'll be at 11.30, and Mike will be a part of the uh, statewide broadcast from Indianapolis after he joins me in Dayton Saturday afternoon. Don't forget to mention about the uh, unexplained Dean. Another edition, the final edition of The Unexplained tomorrow on Newswatch at 6. When we visit a hypnotist, which... You know, I think, really we, interesting. I think we visited The Unexplained today. We had kind of a, a strange way of getting here today. Unexplained occurrences. We will talk about that later, maybe. Brian Hill with the slam jam, but that only gets the Aces back within 61 to 42. 
this year. Pay less with the IRS. The inventory reduction sale at O'Daniel Reigns. Our tax deadline means big savings. A new Nissan Sentra or hard body pickup. Your choice, only $69.88. Over 70 Nissans in stock. Choose a well-equipped 1990 Sierra. Now only $10,990. Or get $1,500 cash back on Delta 88s. Every Oldsmobile, every Nissan marked way down for the IRS. Inventory tax reduction sale at O'Daniel Reigns Oldsmobile Nissan, downtown Evansville. Hello to all my friends and family back in the Tri-State. I'm Barbara Hobbs of Evansville, hostess of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Each week, join me along with Mark Patrick and Tony Lamont as winning Hoosiers have a crack at winning cash and fabulous prizes, even a million dollars. The next Hoosier Millionaire could be you, someone you know or someone from the Tri-State area. So watch every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. A rainy Cincinnati garden, so at least it's rainy outside. It's not raining inside, but it could be raining on Jim Cruz's birthday party. He didn't get a very good birthday party at all today. No, it's 36th. The cake will not taste sweet tonight. Leading the way for UE tonight, Brian Hill with 18, Chris Mack, another solid game with 15. Not much support, though. Schreffler with pretty much of an off night, and Chaka was nowhere to be found with zero of seven. I don't mean to sound cruel, but he really, uh, they needed some help from him tonight, and he was 0 for 7 from the field and committed a couple of turnovers. For Xavier, Tyrone Hill, 16 points, 14 rebounds. Michael Davenport with 14, and Jamie Gladden with 10. We were uh, watching the baton twirler, making sure she didn't hit us during the timeout, and sure enough, it landed on press row on her last throw, and uh, some of the newspaper guys down there were diving out of the way. Diving in the way there was Jamie Gladden as nice he gets move. his 12th point of the night. Nice move to the hoop. Little right. rough play inside, and the defense is applauded. By the, Went off of Donald. By the Xavier faithful that's left. Bob Kester will check in for Xavier. And the front line players look like they're headed for the bench. Derek Strong going out. Strong with a very good evening. One of the glaring stats, as we've said many times tonight. Derek Strong, seven points as he hits the bench. 22 turnovers for the Aces. I think that seven points is a little misleading because he did a lot of good things out there for Xavier tonight. Plus, they are well below their average. They've only had 63 points tonight. That is Parker. That nice. is Parker's first bucket of the night. And they've stretched it down to 23. That is their biggest lead of the evening as Barrett brings it across. Kester and Hoopman really going at it inside. Shane Barry just got knocked on his tush, and Gary Muncy said, I don't think that's a foul at this point in the game. Nice pass to Hill. Mack. And as soon as Kester got his hands on the ball, the crowd went wild. They like Kester here. He has uh, been a very much a role player the last couple of years. But he played very well the, his freshman year. He's a senior. He's been around for a while. And Hoopman rips down the board. There's a jersey hanging atop the Cincinnati Gardens, number 23. Of course, that belongs to Byron Larkin. And probably will retire number 42 before it's over with Tyrone Hill. Mark Jewell, a nice form on that shot. Gets his first two of the night. He's been rather silent for the most part. Gladden outside. Probably like to get Tyrone Hill another bucket before he goes out. Kester's an obvious favorite. They want him to go. Uh, they want him to score, no doubt about it. He has scored one point this season. And a couple of changes into the lineup. Number 52, Dwayne Wilson, and also number 21, Jerry Butler. A guard averaging 1.9 points per game. Wilson has seen action in every game but two this year, and he's back in. Eldridge Bolin now into the lineup, replacing Sasha. 
This is the first time in four games we've seen Eldridge. He has been out three and checks in now. And Kester bounces it, bounces it, and bounces it out. So the crowd will get a cheer again. And standing he, oh. he doubles his season output. He has two points on the season and one point tonight. Mark Jewell getting a first start in 12 games. This is Chris Mack. Jewell rips it down, goes to the other side, nice likes move. the little reverse move. He went up with confidence that time. Earlier in the game, as he had his fourth point, earlier in the game he didn't want to go to the hole. That time he looked like he had confidence. Well, hey, 33 and 42 are out of there. That's Hill and probably Strong. one of the reasons. Another rebound. Parker puts it up. He's got four. And we are under a minute to play now. And timeout, aces. 50 seconds left to go. We have already told you that uh, Dayton, they won tonight. They beat Xavier, or they beat uh, St. Louis, rather, 84 to 81 in overtime. And the Cats, the University of Kentucky, upset LSU. Mike Blake will be along on Newswatch at 10 to bring you all the scores get you up to date on all the latest sports news. And again, Dan, the baton swirler is over there in front of us, and we better keep our eye out on those flying batons. As long as he stays away from us, avoid injury. It is 68 to 48. We have 50 seconds left. You going out to fa uh, Family Fest? Pardon you going me? out to Family Fest this weekend? That's right. We forgot to mention that. Tomorrow, News Watch at 5 will be live from Eastland Mall on the Family Fest. Family Fest will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I am there Sunday afternoon. When are you there? I'm there Saturday morning, 9 to 12.30. Can't wait. Should be fun. Good. As soon as I get back from Dayton, I'm coming out there Sunday. Hope we see you there. Got to meet a lot of nice folks last year. And they played Happy Birthday to Jim Cruz during that uh, last time out. Didn't it hasn't been a very happy one for Jim. Didn't see him smile. Jewel dribbles in, takes the shot, and he's got six points now. All of a sudden, he's hot. It's a little late, but nice to see him shooting. Jerry Butler's in. And from way outside is Eric Knopp. Once again, Dean, if we can just, as we recap here as the game winds down, the turnovers are what really hurt the Aces, and the perimeter shooting. They just didn't get the perimeter shooting tonight. Jewel looks to Barrett inside. Nice dish from nice. Shane, and Milt Donald has his first two points. Aces get it back to 16. From way outside, the three-pointer is Mark Pointer. Pointer had five points coming in to tonight, and now has eight. Milt Donald from the outside, and that's the final. From Cincinnati, 71-52. The Aces lose to Xavier, and the Musketeers remain the number one team in the MCC. And we will be back right after this timeout. The nation hails a great American. The Big Twin is back at Hardee's, accompanied by new Krispy Curls fries. It's a classic taste with a new twist. Thousands cheer the big taste of two burgers, lettuce, cheese, and Big Twin sauce. Hundreds thrill at the specially seasoned Krispy Curls. Yes, America, the Big Twin is back, but only at Hardee's. And right now, you can get the Big Twin for an incredible 99 cents plus tax. That's right, just 99 cents. So hurry to Hardee's. The following is a Chevy Truck Month demonstration. This is a full-size Chevy pickup with three-year bumper-to-bumper coverage. This is a Ford pickup with three-year bumper-to-bumper coverage. This Chevy has a standard Vortec V6 engine, the biggest of any full-size pickup. This is the Ford available with a Vortec V6. And now get a bedliner on a Chevy full-size truck at no additional charge. A $350 value. Now, which truck would you rather drive home? The Chevy. See a Tri-State Chevy Geo team dealer today during Truck Month. You know other banks make a lot of promises. At Old National, we make guarantees. You want direct access to a money mover specialist 24 hours a day? We guarantee it. How about bounce-proof checking? Guaranteed. The best deal in town on home equity rates. Guaranteed. You know, 
There's a big difference between a promise and a guarantee. To make a guarantee, you have to have the strongest bankers in town behind you. We do. Guarantee. That's why Old National is your bank for life. Hi, this is Kirk Clyatt, just finishing up this giant picture. I wanted to let you know how you can be a WFIE weather kid. Just draw a picture like this. Make it a weather scene, sunny, rainy, stormy, whatever you like, and send it with one of your school pictures to this address. Make sure we have your name, address, and age. Get a parent to help. We could select your picture and put it and you on TV. Be a WFIE weather kid. Enter today. Let me go back to my coloring here and add that red in. Xavier improves their record to 20 and 2. The Aces fall to 14 and 12. Individual scoring, the Hills lead the way. Brian Hill had 18 for the Aces. Chris Mack 17. Tyrone had 16 for Xavier, and uh, Michael Davenport had 14. Dan, it's been fun. Nice working with you, Dean. Thanks a lot. All right, the final from the Cincinnati Gardens, 71-52. Xavier over Evansville. Good night, everybody.